Okay. Uh, so hi everybody. We're here, uh, and we're gonna be seeing po new Pokemon Snap any percent by Pwns New, uh, and I'm excited to see this because I've actually never personally seen a new Snap run. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and take it away from here. Okay, perfect. Uh, I'm Pwn Noob. Uh, this is going to be new Pokemon Snap. I'm also here with Ib, who is the current world record. Say hi, Ib. That's me. Perfect. Uh, so just a bit of housekeeping before I press the start button. Uh, we're playing in Japanese because it's faster. And we're playing as the girl because she has cool socks. With that all out of the way, let's get this started in 3, 2, 1, playing it. So this is new Pokemon Snap. It's the sequel, though it's kind of a one of those ones that just has a new put in front of it of the original Pokemon Snap game, which is also going to be run tomorrow. Uh, the original is a game of my childhood. I played a ton. It was really kind of like my first speed game. I would just, on a weekend, go, okay, I'm going to beat this game as quickly as possible, or I'm going to take a picture of every single Pokemon. So when this game came out, it was a natural fit for me. Um, I really love this game. Uh, we're going to see a lot of it uh, with the Any% percent run. Uh, there, there is some like DLC and other levels that we won't be doing, and... We're going to be taking as few uh, different Pokemon as possible. Um, really, I think the biggest thing with this game, people ask, is how do you speed run a rail shooter? And generally, the idea with a rail shooter is you're going to be trying to clear screens as quickly as possible. If you're thinking like zombies or whatever. This is a precision rail shooter, though. We're just trying to interact with the game as little as possible. Forgive me while I have to mash here, but if, if you want to explain what things can happen that can cause us to lose time, that'd be fantastic. So obviously you want to go, you know, as fast as possible. You've got the set path during the level and you want to reach the end of it as quickly as possible. Now later on, way later on in the run, you get a turbo engine. So obviously once you get that, the strat is to be using that as much as possible to get to the end. But the rest of the time you're kind of stuck at what you would expect to be a fixed speed. But actually, there, the, your speed is not fixed. There are certain things that you can do to control your speed. Anytime that you're zoomed in with the camera, that actually significantly slows you down. So one strategy is going to be to be zooming in as little as possible while taking photos. So you might say that quick scoping is optimal. And the other thing is that looking to the side or backwards also slows you down. So anytime that you're not taking a photo, you're going to see Ponu looking straight ahead. Somewhat but significant added up over time. You did the entire run looking to the side rather than looking forward. Yeah, interestingly, we, as uh, the first thing we do when we get into the game is make the cursor go faster. Uh, which actually makes this Pikachu picture one of the hardest in the game uh, because it is done at a really slow cursor speed and it's completely different than every other picture in the game. I don't have access to your settings during the tutorial so you can't set the uh, sensitivities that you're used to for the rest of the run. We're being taught how to take good photos but I'm gonna let Ip do that because not everybody in this chat speaks Japanese. Yeah, so essentially you can see this list of numbers that's going to show up as you submit this photo. Every time you submit a photo at the end of the level, all of your photos will get graded. There's there's a pose that's inherent to just what the Pokémon is doing at the time. There's size, placement, position, so it's like placement as in centered. And then there's also uh, a cup having some sort of special thing like a waterfall or something in the background as well yeah we're not gonna be taking too many technical photos and not like a lot of setup because they take a lot of setup with involves making a lot of uh, so a lot of things that we're gonna be doing are pretty straightforward we're gonna be getting into our first level it's gonna be park day and we're gonna start off with some of the most technical photos in the whole run uh, so yeah, so Hopefully first thing they go well. Yeah, first thing you'll see is obviously adjusting the uh, the settings, and then there will be a pavilion off to the side, and then you've got two of the most troll photos in the game. Well, mainly one of them, as you will uh, see in a second here. Essentially, on the right, there's going to be both a Pichu and a Grookey, and you need pictures of both of them, pretty much one after the other. And the problem with this is, as you see when he takes this pavilion, you can see that little text that shows up, and there's like a little box that appears around it, it locks onto it. And so, if you lock onto the Grookey, 
and then take a picture of Pichu while it's still rocked onto Grookey, both of your pictures will count as the same thing, and then you just don't get points for one of them. So it, there's a bit of maneuvering there to actually get both of them to count as separate Pokemon. And I didn't get it, which is really surprising. Uh, we generally are really practiced at what is at this because it's at the very beginning of the run. Um, but the game just did not decide to give me the cursor change. Uh, I got four pictures of Grookey, with three of them very much centered around the Pichu. It's not that big of a deal. There are There is a Pichu later on in levels, and there are some other backups that you can I, do. I took so. the move one, so. Yeah, that'll do. Uh, we'll just route that in later. Yep. So, essentially, the way this game works is the goal is to, you know, complete the main story, and progressing to the next level in, you know, each of these stages to get unlocked the next the next stage, the next island, the next, you know, story progression. The majority of them are you need to reach research level 2 on each individual stage. So, for example, once we reach research level 2 in Park Day by submitting enough pictures and getting enough points, then we'll be able to unlock Park Night. And so on. So the idea is to t get to level 2 with as few pictures as possible, because every yep. time we have to submit and analyze a photo, that obviously takes time. Yeah, and this is why I didn't want to deal with this Pichu, because as soon as like, he gets anywhere close, he walks into the bush. Yeah. Uh, so with this level, it's 40,000 points, and while I don't think the points are that particularly interesting, uh, the game considers a picture of 4,000 points to be a good picture, a diamond picture, if you will. So if we can take 10 photos of 4,000 points or more, we'll be good to go. Uh, the issue is we have additional routing constraints. Uh, we're about to take two pretty garbage photos. And let's do it. Get this magic heart. And my favorite photo in the game, boot butt. Boot butt. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you might be I think wondering. all the runners have the park days uh, split. Oh, yeah. Just boot butt. Yeah, something like that. But, so you might be wondering why we would take pictures like that, if you could maybe, you know, it, maybe if you take two uh, a different picture, you'll have way more points and, you know, you could just have a lot easier of a time. But so, as we were talking about, we want to minimize the time spent in the analyzation screen at the very end when you're submitting the, po the photos. And any time that you register a photo of a new Pokemon that you haven't t taken a picture of before, you get this little animation that pops up that's like, new Pokemon registered in your photo decks. And we want to avoid that, because that's slow. I think it loses like three or four seconds per new Pokemon. So one strat that you'll see throughout the entire run is we're going to be trying to take pictures of as many repeated Pokemon as possible. So we take a picture of Magikarp and Hoot Hoot there, because they show up in later levels. Magikarp is in like pretty much every level. So Magikarp is a really good one because it's always a repeat and it only takes about two seconds to register the photo, or three rather than seven. Yeah, the uh, the comfy come up there at the end of the level just asking to have their photo taken and we just refuse because they're worth less points and the uniques that we have here are worth more points. Uh, thankfully, auto selector, other than I need to press left there, uh, does a job here. So that's a picture of Grookey. <laughs> This is what we're talking about. The cursor was locked onto Grookey there, and it was upset, and it didn't move onto the Pichu quickly enough. So it just said, hey, you know this picture that very clearly is all Pichu? Yeah, that's actually Grookey. So I added a Bufalant to our route. Uh, it's going to be fine, because I can just take a Bufalant here in the night version. Uh, because there's like day and night versions of each level, uh, a lot of the Pokemon are going to be repeated between the levels. Uh, this Dodrio is always fun, uh, getting him as he's posing down. A good yeah. one, too. Perfect. You can also see this little new animation that's showing up each time. That's exactly what we were talking about, with wanting to avoid that as much as possible. Because as you can imagine, that might add up when you're taking a hundred photos in the run or something or more than that. Yeah, we got 500 pose for that hoo-hoo. Perfect. Precisely what we want. And... Yeah, generally like 4,500 is like a really good photo. Uh, 4,500 is kind of the maximum you can get if you don't have anything particularly special going around with the photo. And we'll blast by this goal because I took the Wuflon, but we definitely needed it because the Pichu was way short. Yep, yeah, usually that Pichu is about 2,000 something points and you can usually get it up to 4,000 if the game's nice to you, so that would have covered it very well. 
wants to teach us about something, but it'll take lots of time to teach us about it, and we can just talk about it. It's going to be scanning. Uh, there's quite a few things that this game has. Uh, some of them will be familiar if you played the originals, such as the apples, or as they're now called, fluff fruit. Uh, and the orbs are pretty similar to the pesto orbs of previous. Uh, scan's a really cool one, though, because it does a lot of different interactions. Uh, it makes Pokemon turn around to us and generally surprises them and gives them good pose. Uh, between scanning and what we call bonking, just hitting with an apple, are going to be a lot of our interactions just to get a few extra hundred points here or there based on the pose. Some other Pokemon speedruns you want to avoid bonking, you know, time loss, you run into a wall, but we will be doing a lot of bonking intentionally. Yeah, we don't want to run into Pokemon. Uh, I think that's the one time loss that we haven't mentioned. Yes. We'll, we'll show up a lot, yeah. uh, and it's one of our favorite things to avoid. Yeah, so this is that tutorial for scanning. Just skip that. We don't. We we know this. We know what we're doing. You're getting trolled in chat. Somebody asking about uh, all four star picks when. God, yeah, maybe good. maybe one day. <laughs> I mean, shout outs to the high score community. While I enter and exit this level, uh, they've been really helpful in regards to just finding really good photos. But they've also gotten bored of high scores and have started coming and giving us advice in the speedrunning too. And like some of the hottest tech that we're going to be showing here today is hot off the press and from the high score community. So they've been fantastic recently. And as we you, definitely as you saw here, here, he was uh, entering, just entered that level and immediately left. There's like, as I mentioned, the majority of the just triggers in the story are involving either uh, reaching level two on a research level and sometimes taking a photo of certain uh, flowers as we'll see pretty later on but also there are some scenarios where you just need to enter and leave a level usually with a picture this is the only scenario that i know of where you just literally just enter and then immediately leave again but the game forces you to enter the park day twice before it'll give you park night so yeah <laughs> Now yeah, in other levels, we get more clever. Uh, there's definitely times where we can like take photos, and they're really helpful to what our overall goals are. Uh, it changes the way the professor talks to us when we do a dark day, and just causes more time in the lab, and we hate being in the lab. We like being on the courses where it's pretty. Uh, this is a level that just keeps on getting harder the more we route it. Uh, I do need to add a Buffalon in, so let's do that at some point. First, let's check it here. Eh, might be a bit early. Points really matter here. I need to be quite precise with my photos or we're going to be short. Not that short is really back breaking. Definitely not marathon breaking. I don't know why I'm scanning So, here. Uh, park day, we had to get 40,000 points. And as we said, an average of 4,000 is for like a just average, really pretty good picture. Park night requires 50,000. And we try and do it with only one additional Pokemon added, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So, we really want every single photo to be top tier. Um, so I added Buffalon, so I'm gonna skip Score Bunny, which means I'm still gonna take this from Pro. Generally, my understanding, and it might be why I'm not the order record holder, is looking up or down doesn't lose us time compared to side, side or left. So I will be able to either show the level off uh, if given time by looking up or down or just prepare to take photos. Um, but Park Day generally is actually one of the least pretty uh, places, which is kind of absurd to say because it yeah. is still beautiful. It's just the game, the rest of the game looks so amazing. Yeah, just gonna go along through here and take some more really good photos. I think we're looking for an average of a little over 4,500 probably for each photo. Absurd, by the way, but yeah. we don't really have any bad photos in this level. Yeah, because there are not too many repeats, and the repeats that we do have just have opportunities to get amazing photos, like the Swana that'll be coming up in a second can just get extremely high level, or high, uh, high points. 
So as we mentioned, 4500 is about the average if you just take an average good photo with nothing else going on, but... So that Swana, for example, had those ducklets in the background. That Pichu picture there had uh, the Grookey and the Torterra in the photo as well. All of those are going to add on other Pokemon points. You'll see in one of the bottom two uh, sections on the point scoring at the end. It, nope. it, it, Don't get out of here. Thank you. I don't know why I scanned that. Uh, pretty high. <laughs> I made that much harder than it had to be. <laughs> this is the one I want to scan. I'd like to scan my hand. Okay, uh, we're done actually, because usually uh, I could try and take the Torterra if I'm feeling I need a 200 more points, but I'll lose the time in the album if I have to select it, and I'm not doing the score bunny because of our rerouting from the poof launch. So I think we're good. This is going to be really tight, and if you are at home, Feel free to give yourself a mental drum roll, because I have a suspicion that we're going to be within a few hundred, either above or below. Yeah, speedruns of this game just always involve uh, getting very, very close to that point threshold, either over or under. I think yep. my, uh, my my record run actually gets the one of the Snow Knight goals by exactly five points. My, uh, my PB, I think, actually. Uh, the one I did here in practice for this run. Uh, had a jungle day or jungle night by one point. Wow, I've never uh, seen one I, point before. I, I took, yeah, I was messing about. I took the uh, the bomb suite instead of the light part for no reason. <laughs> Other than, so like, yeah, this is math. Uh, we just came off Arceus, and it's kind of uh, ridiculous how a lot of the routing in Arceus with the ways that you interact with the Pokemon ends up being pretty similar to the way that you need to think about Pokemon Snap. Uh, with the star values and okay, yeah, I'm just thinking about the map here. This is a Torterra I messed up previously, but I think this is really good. Yeah. You have to get the tree. Uh, this is not brilliantly centered, but still should be okay. We'll see. We'll see. It's gonna be close. It's scrappy, but I think it's gonna get there. I have to guess. 178 points in Frisco. Yeah, I was gonna say, go. it should barely get there. Nice. Um, similar to po uh, Pokemon Ar Arceus, there's just a lot of knowledge base that you have to know. Uh, I know that they were talking about papers you literally have to like figure out your new route when you mess up. Um, we just need to be able to like eyeball a photo and go, yep, that's how many points that's gonna get, and this is what I need to do if it's not gonna be that. Um, there's a lot of small, just like knowledge base, and that's kind of why I really like the game. Um, I consider myself more of a router than a runner in some ways because it's the part I really enjoy is just having a knowledge base and just feeling clever or smart when uh, I get to apply something. Usually, because I've made a mistake. So if he had not gotten. 50,000 points there on Park Knight. It wouldn't have been the biggest deal in the world because there is another forced re-entry pretty soon where we're required to take a new picture and uh, it, it very easily could have been routed in to just take uh, the last picture for the last couple points in Park Knight there if needed but it does save a little bit of time to take it somewhere else as you will see soon. Yeah, I think now I want to talk about this in a moment but uh, yeah, the game has the same issue as Pokemon Snap, and you'll see that in the run tomorrow, where you can't unlock a level and get given a new thing at the same time, so we end up having to do these forced re-entries. Shoutouts to this Pokemon. If you've never seen the cover art for, uh, for Pokemon Snap, you might not know, but Ganium is the mascot of this game, if you had to give it a mascot. And I kind of love that. Meganium, in my mind, is like one of the least loved starter Pokemon. Like, if you think about the first three gens, right, you got Charizard, Venus, or Blossom, all great. You got Feraligator and uh, Tarantar, cool Pokemon. The Gen 3 Pokemon are really beloved too. Uh, something like Mudkip, of course. Um, Meganium's kind of just like the really li likable Pokemon, but just nobody wanted to pick it in Gen 2. And I love the idea that they put Meganium as the Pokemon here. Let's actually take the photo of Meganium. Uh, there we go. Right, light up, please. Thank you. Uh, we like to take three when we're doing the marathon for uh, good value. The 
whole game though just has really good Pokemon choices. Um, I'll talk more about like my favorite Pokemon later, but just a ton of Pokemon that I've fallen in love with, with because of this game, and a lot of Pokemon that you wouldn't necessarily expect because they're not like incredibly popular Pokemon, though the popular Pokemon are in the game too, uh, that are just fantastic choices. And also Vanilla Ice. But yeah, these Illumina Pokemon, like this Meganium, are kind of like the boss levels, almost. So, uh, the goal of the run is to kind of, like, not learn. The story kind of points you towards, uh, one of these Illumina Pokemon on each island. And, uh, so, essentially you're doing various things to unlock this level, finishing this level, and then moving on to the next area. Yeah. Apologies, this is actually one of the prettier levels, and I'm not looking around because it's slow. Um... Well, I'm still on PB or world record pace. Uh, I'm not gonna mess about much, but if it, <laughs> if it all goes uh, sideways, uh, you guys will get to see a bit more of the levels because I'll get I'll get sillier. Bye bye, Meganium. Uh, this is one of the shorter boss levels. Uh, this is usually where I go refill my water, especially if I've been doing a couple resets. Uh, if exactly what happened with Pichu happens. Yeah. Uh, this is usually a good time for me to go grab water before we get into what is going to be, I think, a, not a fast-paced section, but like one of the longer sections of actual gameplay. Like, Manuing is going to be the death of me. If I don't enter a level when I'm not meant to, uh, we're going to consider that a victory today. Yeah. <laughs> if I talk through Manuing, it ruins me. Okay, we broke the 5,000 seal. Do you want to talk about that meme? Yeah, so there's these little awards that you'll see him getting right here pretty soon that'll be like, wow, you took a picture of this many Pokemon. Wow, you took a picture of Meganium. And there's one that says, like, wow, here's an award for taking a picture that's over 5,000 points. So theoretically, if you could go the entire run without taking any photos that are over 5,000 points, you'd save, like, a second. <laughs> but that's, like pretty much impossible not really impossible but it's not it's not worth doing it getting a picture over 5,000 points is just a lot safer and easier for certain levels like there are even certain non illumina pokemon that you'll get over 5,000 so yeah, it's more or, just a meme time or it's just usually where we break it which won't be for like two hours yeah uh but in theory, I mean, if you just did all the Pokemon that you could do in Forest and then just add a Magikarp, like if you're doing a safety run, you could genuinely save that second. Uh, the other I mean, one that gets... you could just you could just ta like task your way to getting like every five thousand photo just to be four thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. You'd be fine. Yeah, exactly. Perfect. <laughs> uh, we are getting our badge. Um, we've been a temp worker, but now we're gonna get paid and have uh, healthcare, which is great. Yeah, and these are all the badges that we get during the run, so that must mean we're ready to go to the E4. Yeah, we, uh, this is basically the equivalent of beating Brock. And <laughs> we'll just head back to Viridian City and see if they'll let us in. If but Giovanni yeah, so... wasn't such a jerk, we could have just gone straight to the uh, Elite Four if only one badge mattered. Rude. Okay, uh, we're gonna get taught about apples. When I say taught about apples, we're gonna get tried to talk about apples, and we're gonna immediately leave the tutorial. Uh, so, or fluff fruit. Uh, the tutorial does teach us that the apples are not actually apples, and they are soft, and a Pokemon love them, so it's fine. You can pick yeah, Pokemon and, and make them all fall those over. all of those these painful faces that you're gonna see in the run when we hit a Pokemon in the face, and it's like uh, that's clearly just all faking. Yeah, because it's soft. And they're just surprised. But yeah, so this is one of the weirder progression sections of the run. Normally, every time you like, you know, are at a point where you can go to the next area at the end of the level, it'll just say return to camp and it won't let you try. But here, it kind of just, it's a bit like vague, but essentially you just have to submit any new photo. So new meaning a photo that gives you extra points, because this is one thing. So in a level, um, when you, if you submit, for example, a one-star photo, and then you retry and submit a two-star photo, it will count as extra points for that level. So it has to be something, something like that. And so this Meganium photo will do it for us, and then now we can return to camp and move on. Uh, the reason we do Meganium, uh, interestingly, is because it's just a really quick loading screen. 
Uh, this is perhaps the most interesting cutscene in the whole game. So I'm gonna let it talk for itself, because I hear some snaps. Who could that be? It's Todd Snap. It's the, uh, it's the OG. This is uh, who you play as in the original game, uh, but he's all grown up, and while I look more like the professor than Todd, uh, he's grown up with me. This is touching. Um, also, shout out, shout out to Rita, by the way. Uh, she's based around, like, Udra with her hair, yeah. and I love I love her whole character. And then we get the worst character in the game. <laughs> so yeah, we don't have voice lines on, so just listen for the stomps. Blair. Yeah, luckily the... it saves time to have the voices off because it just does during dialogue and during other things, so we don't have to listen to uh, Phil. But Phil is like, yeah, Phil sucks. Yeah, Phil's one of those characters I wish was named question mark question mark question mark, uh, so we could name him <laughs> naughty things. Uh, he's just an antag like antagonistic force without being an antagonist. He's just a bully. Yeah, there's like no antagonist in this game. <laughs> Yeah, we don't like Phil. And we all, like, independently decided not to like Phil. I mean, the uh, game kind of, like, descends you in that direction. Yeah. But shout out to Serena. She helps us, and she looks like Gudra, and that's cool. We're done with Island 1. Now we can move on to Island 2. If you won't finish for a very long time. <laughs> uh, Jungle Day used to be a real boss level. Somebody said posture check and got me all subconscious. I'm gonna move slightly closer to my screen. <laughs> there we go. Uh, and me and Ib have come to the realization that maybe we should stop taking the best photos. And we should actually just play the game quickly. And so we've added an extra photo into jungle. And as a result, we can take much worse photos uh, faster. And it's saved us a lot of time. Uh, as soon as we stopped trying to high score everything, um, this run kind of opened up. It does make the routing kind of weird um, in that we are actively trying to take the perfect, quick, bad photo instead of just taking, you know, good photos. Uh, this is also the first level where we need to defend our uh, honor from Pokemon trying to get in the way of the cart. Uh, the first terminal is this Beautifly? Uh, this Beautifly will be another one in a second. If you don't hit them with an of the monster like this here, then they will just kind of, you know, fly right in front of your, uh, your little vehicle and they will stop you and slow you down if you don't like that. Because that's took slow and not fast. I... Shoot. I took two Picky Peck picks. I do have the option to take a Picky Peck pick at the end of the level uh, that is a three star Picky Peck pick. And auto picker will pick the peak picky pack pick if I need to. I think I'm going to base it on what I do with this Arbok, who's not being kind. I'm going to take that. Then you can do a three star. Picking all the picky pack pictures. <laughs> it should be fine. I'll just take a slightly more responsible uh, Quagsire and just trust that my picky pack pick is. Enough. There's obvious, as you might have seen at the end of the levels, we're uh, using an auto select, so rather than manually going through each photo and saying, yep, I want this one of this Pokemon and so on, there's, there's an auto select feature where you just kind of press a button and it'll choose what it thinks is the best. And uh, generally, it will, if you have like a one star photo and a two star photo and you haven't submitted either of them before, then it'll take a uh, star value so if you ever mess up like a one star picture you can take a, like a three star picture as a backup and as long as that one's good it should almost always be chosen yeah uh, just to explain star values one star is like a pokemon just standing there two star is a pokemon that we've interacted with usually like a scan or a bomb three star is like ooh, that pokemon's doing something cool um and then four star is like ooh, i set up a a, a, a root goldberg machine and this pokemon did something really dope uh, this is a new Pokemon for our route. Shout out to uh -oh, I really need to be careful here. Yeah. But uh, that match carp is that. quick. Yeah. I didn't know about this one for the longest time. Yeah, you can't really see him unless you look out of the way. I uh, need yeah. you to not run into me, buddy. I'm just going to not look at you and that's enough. Uh, usually we get the match carp down there. 
Okay, you need to go away. Thank you. Uh, I've already done Beautifly, I've already done Magikarp. Uh, I just need to go back there. I just got very, very sad. Uh, if I somehow short this, by the way, uh, because I've taken some bad photos and generally we're trying to be quick with them, um, it'll be really sad because this is probably the easiest of the 14 levels that we're going to be dealing with. Uh, so I'm going to bump the quite up for a few hundred extra points just to feel confident after that poor Pinkie Peck performance. And on how the uh, magic card goes, I think. How many oh, yeah, the magic card takes off for you from cutting off the. I think uh... it's gonna be like 3,500 to be honest. That's probably enough. It should be enough, yeah. We'll see. As soon as I say something, uh, I'm putting a bet on it basically, so I probably should <laughs> not say things like that. Yeah. But it's not a. It's not a uh... That magic card's gonna have to 4,500, and we struggle to get uh, even over 4,000 with the magic card that we knew about. And get like points on park night re-entry here. No, you have to get you have to no. get to level two to unlock park night. So. Oh right. Silly. Got that part. <laughs> Almost had the strat. <laughs> That's a lovely beautifly. If I do say so. Beautifly can get to like some really high value. Nice. Yeah, the one later are sometimes worth. And I didn't bunk the Arbok, which... Okay, that's not horrible. Okay. okay, okay. And the Arbok A pops on straight. If that's I mess it up on Jungle Day, I'm gonna be very sad. This is not the place to be losing time. The Arbok was decent, it will cover all of the rest. <laughs> at 1300, there we go. Yeah, that's... Yeah, like, this picture is beautiful, right? And you'll see at the bottom... 600 background points. That's the waterfall. That's I remember that other Pokemon too. Uh, but we're getting points for the Quagsire, the Flower, the Waterfall are all considered uh, extra bonus points. In general, uh, you have one of those uh, like crystal green flowers in the background that'll add on some bonus background points. <laughs> ah, that's a lot closer than it should have yeah. been. I made the correct decision to uh, not be a scumbag and take an actual Quagsire photo because uh, that was. A bit close. You made That's all that matters. And now we move on to Jungle Knights. So Jungle Knights and where we start to deal with these Crystal Blooms. So there is a Crystal Bloom that will be glowing, and the Professor wants you to take a picture of it for research so that he can, you know, research it, because it's one of the things that he does. So as... He does. Yeah, well, he's a professor. He researches stuff. I don't know. But yeah, as was mentioned earlier, you cannot get two separate story progressions at the same time. So one story progression is taking a picture of this glowing crystal bloom, and one story progression is getting to Jungle Knight level 2. And the professor won't let you do both of them at one time. So you're forced to enter this level at least twice to be able to get both of those story progressions. So we actually use that in our routing. This is, I think, our last uh, course that has like some marathon protection um, for a bit. After this, I need to just be a bit more careful. Jungle Day doesn't have protection. It's just, it's been routed to be easy. Uh, if this goes poorly, we're gonna be revisiting this level and I can I can make it work no matter what. I would prefer if it doesn't go poorly though. But yeah, we will intentionally be shorting this level and re-entering it to take pictures of the same Pokémon again, because rather than taking a picture of however many unique Pokémon, it would be faster if you could take repeat Pokémon. As we mentioned, it'll save a couple seconds for each repeat you take over unique. So we're going to take total advantage of that. Which uh, Merlot do you take, by the way, Ib, these days? Um, what did I do it? I don't know. I, I like alternate between like the one that's like coming up pretty soon and the one right at the end of the level. Yeah, I'm on the <laughs> I don't know which one's off right now, just because. Yeah. I find you can get slightly more points, and I find points to be more interesting than speed. <laughs> this level. Uh, yeah. There's quite a few Pokemon that we haven't seen yet. Like there's a Ledian who I'm just not gonna look at. 
uh, to our left in the Ariados, who I abhor. Like, the Ariados in this game are one of the most frustrating Pokemon to just try and take pictures of. You say so you take these guys? They're cuties. And I, I think I mainly take ones at the end, but you can bonk one of these guys he, right here and get some decent points with it. The ones that you just passed. Uh, this is something I have to talk about. Um, the scan feature, I mentioned it's main priority for us is to make Pokemon interact with us in a slightly different way. Uh, I also use the scan feature here because identifying where the stupid picky peck is is uh, actually impossible. And like so in the trees. <laughs> uh, I'd like to just know wh where in the nest this picky peck is. Yeah, so the scan will also, as you saw there, it'll, sh it'll like scan the area and it'll show you which Pokemon where they are. I also use that in uh, Wishy Washy sometimes to identify where the big, big Wishy Washy is coming from. You guys have so much more trouble with Wishy Washy then <laughs> than I do. I've never had issue with that boy. Um, I'm so tempted to take the Woofer that's running below us instead of the Coralol, <laughs> but I'm going to be a responsible adult who's going to yeah. do. Okay. Uh, yeah, this run is just inferior to all Pokemon because the optimal route doesn't take a picture of Booper. You want the apple button? Yeah, yeah, so there is a Magikarp here that we need to feed or do stuff with, and then you need to feed the Yon Mega. And sometimes, if the Magikarp's in a weird spot, you'll try and like feed one of the Yon Megas and have it eat, and then the Magikarp will eat the, the, the food instead. And it's like, no, that's not for you. Uh, yeah, yeah usually I've been trying to feed men. Okay, fish. Don't do the thing I want you to do. It's fine. Yeah, there was that picture of the uh, crystal bloom a second ago, right next to the frag's eye. Uh, yep. Okay. Yeah, that should be good. Except so, yeah. Except for the mold. How, many, how many points are you going to be sure? Uh, about 6,000. Okay. So you need to take more time. Eee. Eee. I remember one time I was okay. doing the routing. So janky. Oh my god. I remember one time I was trying to route in taking three photos on the re-entry. Yeah, no, you can definitely do that. Uh, it's kind of hard to figure out because you go from 6,000, which is very doable, to 10,000. But like, what Pokemon are you removing uh, from the actual run is the issue. Uh, so we're doing this with nine Pokemon. I think we need to... Uh, I do. So one other thing that's just like very very minor time save is anytime you've got a picture that's already been registered on a previous level, uh, it'll still count as new points for this level. Each level has an individual points tally, so you can take a picture of a one star Magikarp on Park Day and then have it also count in part in like you know Jungle Night. But uh, anytime there's two photos with the same star value that are like you know being compared, you always choose the left one because it just saves a tiny bit of time for registering a new picture in the decks. Yeah, that Quagsire photo, by the way, has sweet background and also has the, like, with the flower in it, because the flowers are considered extra points. Yeah. Uh, did I miss a photo? We're doing everything. <laughs> uh, taking the bounce bit, apparently, because I'm not sure... What did I... What did I forget? Something... Oh, I bet the Arbok didn't count. Oh, I forgot Bounce Sweet. I forgot the most forgettable Pokemon in the game. Oh, you did forget Bounce Sweet, right. Yeah, it's it, this is fine. Again, as we said, we're re-entering this level anyways. The goal was to take... The routing is to take two extra pictures on the re-entry, since you're forced to re-enter, but uh, he missed one photo. So uh, we'll just keep taking change anything as long three as photos I... here. Maybe yeah, four. No, three. Three, three, three. three. Good right. to say. It's almost 10,000, but we'll get 4,000 from the Yamega, 2,000 from the Bounce Fleet, 4,000 from the yeah, Life Park, whatever. Yeah, you just take a good Yamega instead of the one off the side. That yep. sense. You have to do it quick, though, which is why yeah. I... I'm going to shut up for a moment since you get in there. Yep, so I'll be quiet as well. It's the Bounce Fleet I'm worried about. It's about here. Yeah, that's your plan. 
should be more than enough. Yeah. So doing the math after I've taken the photos is not helpful, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, so this is the um, reason, in part, that we feed the Yan Mega. Yes. Um, is to make sure that these Yan Megas. This is gonna be close. I thought that Yan Mega was worth more. Okay. Fine. Um. Yeah, this is okay. Take your... Um, Bonk Arbok. Yeah. It's a bit of a ways in, but yeah, it works. But yeah, so one nice thing about this is that once you have gone through a level once, you're able to pause and just quit and evaluate your photos. So I don't, don't trust my part at all. <laughs> oh no! To, uh, you don't have to go through the entire thing again. Yep, that exclamation point means it's a new photo, and so now we're good. Yeah, so that was one entry more than we would have liked, but it's really not that big of a deal. Like, what, 30 seconds? Yep. Um, I think now is a good time to mention it. This is a really beginner-friendly speedrun. Like, if you're looking to get into speedrunning and you love Pokemon, uh, this game, generally, you can put up a pretty decent time. You just take this route, add an extra Pokemon to every level, and there'll be an extra six seconds or something to each level. Uh, you can you can pull that off. Uh, it does give you a really satisfying feeling when you just get better and you get to change your routes. You get to learn something new. Um, it still has that precision that any other speedrun uh, has, so, and the the growth and the good feeling that comes with that. Um, this is the this is the sort of stuff where I'm like, yep, it's 30 seconds. It's not going to uh, to break the day or whatever there's the thing. It's not. There's only a, really a couple things that you can really do that will actually lose you like multiple minutes and things flowers. like that. I took three pictures yeah. of the flower because that's the thing I'm afraid of right now because it yeah. would make me go through the whole level yeah, again. Yeah, the flower if you because you have to go all the way back to that point. The other thing that can really mess you up is if you like fail an Illumina level or something but even then a lot of them are like easy to just get right at the beginning and then you just quit the out second to DLC time. Field. Uh, DLC Phil just taught us about uh, the DLC which is the only cool thing he does in this game and he doesn't do it if you're on the original patch. So, uh, DLC Phil. He's good. Okay, uh, welcome to... We had a, a pass split, but I do the deserty levels first, and we're on Sans Day. Uh, this level's gone through, I think, a few routing changes, just because it shares basically every Pokémon with its night version. So again, optimal putting trying to route in as many repeats as possible. So we'll take pictures of things that we'll see multiple times, like that Heliolisk up there. You can get a really good photo of that, but it doesn't really show up on Sans Night Level 1, so we don't really care about it because that would just be time loss. Yeah. Uh, I think uh, large changes have happened. There's going to be a hippo that's going to be very clearly in the way and very clearly a good picture, and I no longer take it. So. It just turns out that Hippowdon is not a very good picture in Sans Night. So there's a lot better things that you can do. Good. And the bus photo, that can be a bit annoying. That one looked pretty good. Yeah, I, uh, like, wasn't ready for it, and then I had to drag up there in the cursor, and my cursor's on 10 speed because it's faster, um, but if you have to panic a photo, it is, uh, Spooky! This is why uh, I use motion control. <laughs> I hate that our world record holder has yep. motion controls. I'm, I'm the only runner of this game, I think, that, uh... I, uh, I, I don't know why, but I just find it easier to play this game using motion controls, so every time I speedrun it, I just use the motion controls. And everyone's just like, why? And I'm like, I don't know, why not? <laughs> it's coming up here shortly. Uh, it's not what I'm doing right now. I've just scanned that Cacnea, but it is going to be that Cacnea in the future. He's great. If it wasn't for Hoot Hoot's butt, he would be everybody's favorite. Yeah. I like uh, We're going to ask the hippo not to get in front of the cart, please. Please. You're a hippo. You're very slow. 
Do you take magic card? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I sometimes. <laughs> yeah, so Wee. this one's a bit hard, like, to find. Like, you might even not even know that's there, but guess what? There's a magic card there. I think there's a magic card on pretty every much level, every level other than volcano. Except volcano. Yeah. Uh, I I don't understand why. To be honest, volcanoes could definitely have magic carps. I they're red. Red can go in lava. Yeah. There's like water uh, outside too. The DLC of what's called Badlands has a level where they basically just made a, a joke about this, and they just immediately start the level with giving you 30 magic carps, <laughs> and it's great. Um, they also have the uh, the joke that I don't get to do this marathon run with the Bidoof. I spent way too much time doing there, but it's fine. Thank you. Whatever, thank you. That throwback to the original with the uh, the magic carps and the Gyarados. Yeah, uh, the Bidoof, so they're on the DLC level that we just got taught about by Phil. Uh, there's a Bidoof, and one of them faces you, and one of them's just a big old Bidoof butt. And it's a reference to the online community, that in the first few weeks of this game, uh, everybody was uploading their, their photos online, and it was just a lot of butt pics. Uh, it was a lot of just taking the pictures, which aren't worth very many points. Uh, you get more points when Pokemon are facing you, uh, but people didn't particularly care because... The, uh, the little floofs on Bidoof's butt are amazing, and people were hilarious. They leaned into it on the DLC, and I, I love them for it. So this game's been uh, made with a lot of love. Yeah, this game is great. Like, even if you don't care about speedrunning it, I would recommend everybody just at least do a casual playthrough of this, because it's just a lot of fun. Yeah, it, it gives you... Um, when people ask, like, is this a game worth buying? Uh, the answer is it gives you as much as you're willing to put into it. Um, if you're playing it and you're going to play one run and you're doing basically what I'm doing uh, with any percent run, you're just getting to the credits and you're done with it. Cool. If you want to like try and get every photo, dope. If you want to start like trying to get really good high scores, like you're going to have a really good time and there's a community for it. And if you decide to be one of the few people who tries to beat the game as quickly as possible, uh, this is the second best category. Uh, me and Niv uh, are big fans of the all Pokemon run because you get to see more of the game, you get to spend more of the time uh, in Turbo, you get to play it faster in a sense. Also, we haven't reached any of the, uh, the breaks yet, but uh, coming up soon there will be quite a couple levels that have uh, just literally sections where you just sit and do literally nothing. Yeah. And uh, all Pokemon has significantly less of that. <laughs> Yeah, uh, as a percentage. Obviously, it still has them. It's just the second half of the run. You have like two hours of just pure unadulterated picture taking. A couple of like volcano, like volcano two and undersea, you know, are not just breaks anymore. They're just they're actually taking pictures because you need to hit level three. This is a level that I've put some time into, like really learning where to throw these apples. Uh, if you're into Pokemon Snap high scoring, the art of luring, of bringing a Pokemon closer, is uh, something you need to get really good at. Uh, these Cacni are really funny in it, in that they will run faster if the apple is far away, which is important because we want them to be close. Size is king. Uh, I don't think you have mentioned it. Uh, we get up to 2,000 points for size and up to 1,000 points for anything else in the game. Oops. Yeah. Uh, so. A lot of our photos, even if they're not like the best pose or the best direction, we're really just prioritizing size. Poor Scorpy, by the way, that just like just standing there and then just gets hit by a meteor for no good reason. Yeah, um, on the tier list of an or not animals, Pokemon that get bullied in this game, Scorpy is a definite A tier. Um, <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll see the uh, the king. It's <laughs> S plus plus. It's Octillery. Octillery does oh, not yeah. have a fun time in this game, and it's very funny. If you choose to, you can also bully the Gravelers. You're gonna, you're gonna bully the Gravelers in Volcano. I, World. yeah. <laughs> it's a marathon run. I've already course, missed the jungle. Course. We're gonna have fun now. I'm gonna spend the uh, small moments of showing off interactions. We'll also try and save the plug one if we can. Of course. Um, got that little anime. Glint yeah, we got a, we got rock. a hit with Eeyore. <laughs> oh yeah, we got anime lore. Uh, these guys you can take, and they are kind of more straightforward but they are 
the more you interact with them, the more likely they are to run into the cart, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, I just like to look slightly off to the left and hope and play. But yeah, as you can see, pretty much every photo that we've been taking so far in this level has been a Pokemon that we also took in uh, Sans Day, so we're gonna get a lot of lot of time saved by not registering any new Pokemon. I've done that so at many all. times recently. Yeah. Ooh, that's a Kangaskhan photo. Yeah, instead of a that's unfortunate. Photo. It's worth more points. It kind of makes the rest of this level uh, a bit freer. Yeah. But it's going to uh, ruin me in the album, and I'm going to be sad about it. But now it's time for the hardest photo of the level. I can do this blindfolded. I struggle to do it with my eyes open, because I can do this, <laughs> and I can get the photo every time. But I refuse to do that. There we go. Uh, right now, because I've already... Uh, once again, made my, another, made my one mistake. Yeah, another one of those um, levels where you got to uh, take a picture of that Crystal Bloom there. Yep, so Cacnea with the apples in their head are my second favorite Pokemon. I still not, I lost my first love. Shout out to Sandshrew. What a cutie pie. Um, I, I think a lot of the runners for this game are unsurprisingly uh, were kids uh, when the original Pokemon Snap, and that's really what caused their motivation. Um, if not, just actual um, Pokemon Snap runners. And so I wouldn't be surprised if most of our favorite Pokemon do happen to be from Gen 1. Uh, Cacnea has jumped up my list so far. He's genuinely my second favorite Pokemon now. Uh, because we took the Kangaskhan, I'm pretty, feeling pretty confident about every other photo. We're not going to mess around. We're just going to take the Onyx. And... Yeah, you can you can wake up the Onyx and get a lot more points, but no need to do it if it's, you know... There's, there's like diminishing returns with how much time you spend on a photo trying to get maximizing the points on it versus how slow it is. Like, you can get your points higher and higher and higher, but you'll just keep losing. Oh, no, I, I forgot the bounce suite, which is like the one thing I told myself before. Yeah. Don't, don't do this. There's two things I'm going to forget. It's the last flower of the game and bounce suite, and I... One for two already, so you'll get the other one. Why is that six photos? Um, it didn't give me the scorpi. Did I not take a scorpi? I just never took a scorpi. Okay, it's fine. We can we'll be fine. Uh, yeah, we need to do math. I just think it's the we got the flower. <laughs> we're 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 yeah. uh, we're, we're gonna make there. progression here. It's just yeah. gonna be how much we can do trap inch too. Yeah, uh, like an actual real photo trap inch if need to. Yeah. Okay, that's oh that's sexy. close to taking two snaps immediately, but I don't think it is actually two snaps immediately. Yeah, you if you get the if you get like perfect ones immediate photos, you can do it, but like. If you just delay like a good like three seconds, that's probably enough. Yeah. Wait until the trap inches that are closer to you pop out of the ground for a bit more points. But one, one star and three star. Okay. Yeah. One star is a bullshit score. Yeah. Three, I just two started, so we're fine yeah. either way. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, routing on the fly. <laughs> Yeah, just forgetting Pokemon entirely. Uh, but again, Scurpy, it, on we level, still want to do. Yeah, on a level like this, it barely loses any time because you've got this forced pre entry anyway. Which just opens up routing possibilities. Yeah, so that should I th be. I think that's like 2,000 plus 3,000 easily. That be and way more than be enough. Yeah. You've got the extra trap in the photos. Trap well. was the one star that I took. Yeah, okay. Great. Yep, one star was on level one. But I did go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 300 oh. and 3,000, that's 5,000, and that's more than enough. Yeah. As long as we're not taking force free entries, which we have done, but uh, we're losing seconds, not minutes, and that's yeah, a lot of the battle here. And we're definitely still well underestimate. It's just keep oh, yeah, for sure. Bye bye. Yeah. Uh, Upcoming, so we've seen a couple of my favorite Pokemon with Sandshrew and Cacnea. We're moving on to Volcano, which is definitely my favorite level. Volcano, interesting one because 
I don't think there's a single Pokemon in Volcano that is a repeat of anything anywhere else. Like, everything that we take on level 1 is a unique Pokemon. So it really just becomes a point of take the best photos that you can, get to the point threshold with as few points as possible, and just don't spend as long, as, like, spend as few little time getting those best photos as you can. There's no repeat yeah. routing, there's just your best photos, least photos, least time. I know different people actually have different routes for this because there are so I've many viable options. I've never done that. I've, I've wanted to do that for a long time, get nice. both the Altaria and the Luxray, and I'm happy I got that. That's very, that's very happy. And everyone has different routing options. Like, for example, I don't do Luxray, or that Luxray in this level just because it's, I don't bother with it's it. It's very tight. Uh, yeah. So getting the Altaria and the Luxray there um, is just unreasonable, and there's there's m much more reasonable ways to go about this level. Oh, yeah. um, one of the reasons I love this level, other than it looks really cool, and a lot of the Pokemon are really cool, and while I love myself some cute Pokemon, obviously with Sandshrew and Cacnea, uh, cool, I mean, beauty, and all the other like things that you can get like in a Pokemon contest, this is the cool level. But I, I missed. I knew it. <laughs> You're fine. I think you hit his leg or something. He'll still do the thing. Yeah, so this is pretty cool. So you take a photo of the Tyrantrum there, and if you uh, just pay attention here, you'll see us zoom. Okay, so I got Luxray already. Do I do Graveler anymore? I don't do Graveler, so... Just, yeah, turn so yeah, there's a couple interactions like that, where you can interact with the Pokemon and it'll actually push you faster. So that Tyrantrum back there roaring at us actually made us go faster down that little uh, entrance to the cave. Yeah, so this is the sort of time save that we get excited about. I don't have to look sideways for that Luxray or that Graveler because I did that thing at the very beginning. The amount of time we're saving is probably two seconds at most, just not dealing with that stuff. Let's put it up. Yeah, here. Yes, Gravelers are just hanging on and goodbye. They are gone forever. No, that one doesn't. That one. Uh, we're gonna try and save Slugma. Let's do this. Yeah, this Slugma is funny. Slugma! It kind of just sits there and it tries to like just jump into the lava okay. and we're like, no, stay with us. We've given the orb and bye-bye. It's fine, Slugma are made of lava. If the Pokédex is real, I think they're hotter than lava, so... Uh, he should be fine. Yeah, there's you can see Slugma in the lava. You know, he's just taking a nice cold swim in the lava. I question my routing that I take the two photos I'm about to do, but let's do them. Oops, that's way too early. And... no. Way too early. See, yeah. for the longest time, I like I'm, I didn't even know that Torkoal was in this level on level 1. <laughs> like, I just didn't know that guy existed. Uh, genuinely, um, none of the websites, so like your IGNs, your game codes, your whatever, nobody knew about it. Uh, yeah. That Torkoal was one of the most hidden, but like, just clearly, like, not well hidden. <laughs> it was just. Yeah, I've hidden. always, I've always taken that Slugma that jumps off into the lava right for the Charmanders. I got Graveler bonus. There was a Graveler yeah. background in that photo. Yeah, and the Weavile in the uh, in the snow. That's also a hidden one. Yeah. So uh, there's a difference though with the Weavile. It's gonna still show up in your like course completion. Um, people knew about Torkoal and like that location in higher research levels. They just didn't know it was just walking about in research level one. And with speedrun, we just spend all of our time in research level one. So uh, you can't just use the website. Yeah. Yeah, because generally there's not very many things that you'll want to go to research level 1 for. Like, higher research levels will usually have more interactions, more stuff. But, uh... We have... I never mentioned it. Uh, we have genders in this game. Uh, hey, Kevin. Uh, the Pokemon have... are male or female. It doesn't really matter. Uh, it is kind of cool when you're looking at a Bidoof butt or, like, a Dodrio's neck. You go, ah, this is a female uh, Dodrio because of the color. Um, but one of the coolest interactions is that Luxray um, has a size, and the size is based on the size of its head, and the males have bigger heads than the females, if I get the correct way around. 
Um, so it actually changes your maximum potential in that photo. But as you can see, every single one of those photos was like over 4,500, and that's like the beauty of this level, is you just take so many amazing pictures. By the way, the reason I like the circle is if you bonk it, you can literally get 46, 4,700, uh, yeah. which is nice if you need it. I didn't feel any need to like get clever with the monkey or the turtle. Sorry, tortoise. If I'm gonna, yeah. if I'm not gonna call it by its real name, I should at least get the uh, <laughs> the obvious species. That's not a turtle. It's a tortoise. But so here we go with the first uh, break of the run. This is one of the things in any percent that you wouldn't have in all Pokemon. So this, so as we've been mentioning, the story progression. The goal is to get to these Illumina Pokemon, right? The story's kind of pointing you towards these Illumina Pokemon levels on each island. You take pictures of that. That unlocks the next thing, and so on and so on. You're you're jumping the gun. We're on Are we? Too. Yeah. Yeah, I know, but this is... You, you, you threw me no, on. I, I, I was like, yes, I get to go to... No, we're not doing right the Illumina, but this is what I'm saying. To unlock the Illumina Pokemon, previously we kind of just, for Meganium, we just kind of like, oh, look, Meganium's here. But, well, for this one, to unlock the Illumina Pokemon for this area, this is what I was leading into, all you have to do is enter Volcano Level 2 and reach the end just reach the end there will be these ruins professor muriel will be like whoa look at this these look at these ruins there's some like a pokemon that lives here and uh yeah that's all you need to do so literally with this level the optimal thing for the speed run is to just sit there and take literally no pictures because it's faster not to analyze anything and we no longer need points so yeah you just get a break this is the like you know if you're doing the speed run you know just grinding out for a PV, you would just set your controller down and uh, look straight ahead, go take a bathroom break, whatever you need. Uh, yeah, fade in chat saying it feels wrong. Uh, that's because I did a marathon uh, for a really, really long a thon. I did the all Pokemon. Uh, this run ends up being less than two hours and 40 minutes. Uh, world record, I think, is like uh, 231, 232. Um, the all Pokemon takes uh, about 410, 420. Um, but I find it to be a much more engaging run. Maybe not more entertaining, but more engaging, at least as a runner. Uh, I tricked at least one person. That's really my goal when I do these sort of marathons, is if I can just get one person into the community, um, I feel like I've done my part as a speedrunner. Um, that I'm bringing it to somebody else, and somebody else is enjoying it. Uh, Fate's been doing uh, these volcano runs. This level is a lot more interesting when you take photos. Uh, in part because of the star values. Um, when you're trying to take photos and get up to what would be research level 3 to open up things like uh, Flareon, uh, for example, is a Pokemon that you just can't get until you reach research level 3. Uh, you then have to take different star values of each thing. You have to be much more precise about which Pokemon you're taking and what their pose is. Um, it gets a lot more mathy uh, with watching the Pokemon Arceus run that just happened, and if you didn't catch it, definitely go uh, catch it because it was a really good run. Uh, it's a lot of that same sort of, okay, I need to make sure that I'm doing precisely this, precisely that, and it all needs to add up, and then you get math at the end and you find out if you did good or not. And then you got on the, like, oh no, wait, that, oh, that photo of the, uh, I don't know, that photo of the Luxray that I took was a different star value than I'm expecting. Now I gotta adjust which photo I take in the next entry, and so on, just to make sure that you're really getting all the points that you need to reach those thresholds. There's a lot more of that in the all Pokemon speedrun versus the any percent speedrun. They're very different runs in a way. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but Kevin yeah, asked in a chat, did Pokemon, these Pokemon change during the 2.x update? Uh, not much in regards to the actual, like, Pokemon changed, um, but the whole game and the way that we run it, uh, did change. On Seed 1, uh, like, the original game, it was, when you launched a new game of New Pokemon Snap, it would always have the exact same seeded RNG. Uh, now, with the patch 2, and from there, 2x, 2 one 2, two uh, the Pokemon who are moving about and don't have like a scripted thing that they're always doing will wander about. And so that's 
why, for example, I have like multiple Dotrios that I might take, is if a Dotrio at the very beginning of the game uh, is friendly, I will just take him because he's right in front of the camera. Um, but if he doesn't shake his leg, if it's an idle animation that we're looking for, uh, I'd end up just taking a, a later Dodrio. There's a third Dodrio that other runners take. Uh, it results in uh, a more interesting run, to be honest, that we have to deal with this RNG and this routing. I think it's actually made the game a lot more compelling for me to run more. Um, but it does mean that we have to deal with the garbage when the Pokemon don't feel like behaving. And Park there's Day definitely is a few one of the more significant levels that got affected by that because there was yep. Dodrio and also before this used to do a really good idle animation right at the end that it doesn't yep. do anymore so we kind of have to rely on the uh, slightly less points of the uh, the wave. Cool, uh, we've got a big old raid. Uh, welcome to everybody, this is new Pokemon Snap, you've come in at the most boring part, congratulations. Because uh, we're about to go uh, do a boss level, but a boss level in this game means auto-scroller. Uh, so, uh, hopefully, the whole reason I brought Ib, other than he's a world record holder and has lots of smart things to say, is I need somebody to chat with. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a couple spots here, especially since we don't have the turbo engine yet. Like, there's a, there's another one or two uh, pretty, like, break-heavy auto scrollery levels later on, but at least you have turbo during them, so you can just zoom through them a little bit faster, right? Yeah, but... I think this is a good time to talk about lore, though. So, the professor has been teaching us about the Illumina, both the orbs and the Pokemon. And he's under the impression that there are four Illumina Pokemon. That count them four. However, uh, plot twist, uh, Volcarona is one of the Illumina Pokemon, but... There we go. Uh, there's two of them. Uh, so... Assuming that he's not just counting two Volcarona, and hint he isn't, uh, we are now at five Illumina Pokemon. Uh, spoilers, <laughs> because I'm going to say it now uh, while it's on my mind, that's also not correct. Uh, we are going to actually have uh, a fifth set of, of, but then a sixth Illumina Pokemon, and that's if you're not counting the final boss. Uh, who I won't spoil. It's a tree. It might be Sido Widow. Um, in regards to this actual Pokemon, this is Volcarona. Uh, we need to bonk it with the fluff root, the apples, if you will, uh, to make them do what we want them to do. Uh, traditionally, uh, at the very beginning of the run, we would just bonk them here and get it over with so we could go take a bathroom break. Uh, but we've learnt uh, through mainly error, but at least some trial. Uh, that if we do it at the very end of the level, uh, it seems to be faster. Uh, so, with pretty difficult visual cues, um, there's a moment where I'm going to get excited and actually get to play the game, and it's, hopefully it's hit my shots. Quite a few things in this game have been discovered by error, and then scrambling to make up for the error, and then realizing that you just saved time. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, I think most famously, uh, we'll, yes. we'll get to yeah, it. We'll, we'll you get to you, it you have the most famous. Uh, yes, I indeed. had one last, uh, my, uh, I did a run, a dry run for the marathon with commentary, and I accidentally found a new skip, um, with the exact same sort of idea, it's just, it turns out, if you play this game a lot, uh, you can find small things. There's no, like, well, you, you, we are, we do have a major skip at the end, but there's nothing, uh, crazy dramatic. It's usually, oh, we found a way to not bonk into one Pokemon. Yeah, this is Very sure time. this game is not Pokemon. Those are Volcarona. Volcarona might be Gen 5, and if they're Gen 5, they're definitely not Pokemon, but um, <laughs> if they're any fine. other we'll generation, see, We'll they, see an Executor in a minute. You know, that's, that's really cool. Wingle's definitely a Pokemon. Yeah. But yeah, so uh, this is probably a good time to just go over how Illumina levels work. The first one was pretty simple. You just take a picture of Meganium. This one, so, and all the others following this will be a little bit more complicated. We've gotten these Illumina orbs that we've gotten based on Professor Mirror's research on those crystal blooms. So you, you'll take a picture, you show it to him, and he's like, wow, look at this. And then you just uh, get these Illumina orbs that you can make these Pokemon glow yourself without using the flowers. And so for this one and pretty much all the subsequent Illumina Pokemon levels, 
you won't be able to submit just any picture of them. You can't just take a picture of one of these little Corona with the fire around it and submit it. He'll be like, nah, that's not good enough. You have to do something to be able to light it up using the aluminum orb, and once you hit it, as we'll see in a second, there will be these like, stripy patterns that are glowing on it. Only then will the photo actually count towards the story progress. So as you can see here, he's bonking it twice. Now the fire's gone. Now he will be hitting it with the aluminum orb, and we'll have that happen. I want to look backwards. I'll be... Take three photos for marathon reasons, and only yeah, those photos will actually be able to count towards the story progression, which you know will come up very important later on. I think I took the. I feel like I'm doing this wrong, but it's so it's like enough. nothing, and it's hard to like really figure out what you're doing because as soon as you start looking around, uh, you start ruining your timing. So yeah. we'll figure it out. This is not the. Uh... Hey, buddy. This is when I'm probably meant to take the photos. Um. The, uh, this is not the most interesting boss level. The most interesting will be our next one. But once we're done with this, we get to go visit the beach. We get to see some real Pokemon. And that'll be that. Do you actually know which gen? Uh, or maybe our host. Do you know what gen Volcarona is? It is, is, it? It is gen 5, I believe. It is gen 5. There's a really good spread. Obviously, we have more Gen 1 Pokemon. They basically have all the starters, all the starter full evolutions, all the evolutions, those sort of things. Um, but there is a really good spread across all the generations, including uh, the like generations that only just come out in Gen 7. When the game is... Well, oh, we have Gen 8 in this as well. Or Gen 8. Yeah. Got the, the Grookey right at the start. I was like, but I, I really convinced myself that Grookey is Gen 7, uh, which nope. I was like, no, this doesn't make sense because he's definitely in. Uh, what other Gen 8 Pokemon do we see? We don't see Sobble in this. Oh, Score Bunny, we saw. You can Sobble in DLC at least. I don't know, he's in the game. Um, oh, yeah, but I'm talking about like in there. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of Pokemon in this game. And yeah, now we can. Now that we've we've had our temporary uh, break time, we can go do a couple more levels and then get back to break time. Yeah, this middle section of the run has pretty much like all the, the little like break sections where you kind of just sit there doing nothing for you know, auto scrollery levels. There's we had a couple. We're gonna do a few more actual levels where things matter, and then we'll have a couple more auto scroller yeah. type levels. Um. What's an adjective that you use to describe beach? Because mine's finicky. Beach. <laughs> beach is beach. I. Beach. Like, the route that I'm doing now isn't, like, particularly hard. Um, I should be able to do it confidently. I can take a worse Pikachu and still, like, get past the goal. It's not really a, uh... I do not Pikimuku, which okay. is basically what, what I'm saying is, um... Like, this isn't going to be a spot where I expect to uh, have to re-enter. It is going to annoy me because if any of the Pokemon don't behave, and there's a lot of Pokemon that need to behave, so... Uh, well, as we've mentioned, taking repeat Pokemon is faster, and so we'll see in a bit. There will be these people you do off to the side that are like really tiny and off in your block. And they show up in a couple later levels as well, so it's a good opportunity for a repeat. But if you do that, they're just like so, as I'm saying, finicky to actually get a good enough picture to not just completely miss the score. I have just never bothered with it because it's just... It's too finicky at a certain point. It's very hard to be consistent with. So it's... It honestly just saves time to just spend less time getting fo a unique Pokemon, but you so you lose time to getting a new Pokemon, but you save time to not looking to the side and bothering with getting the perfect picture as much, so it's not even too much of a time loss. Uh, we got this uh, Pokey Flute earlier. I'm going to summon some Blossom and then not look at them. <laughs> there they are. Yeah. Uh, we actually realized uh, right before this run started, we only used the Poke Flute uh, in one instance in this whole run, and thankful uh, because it's not a particularly uh, lovely song. It doesn't have that same charm as the uh, the Poke Flutes of old. When you 
game uh, casually or high scoring and you're going for a photo that requires that, you just get, you hear that way too much. This is our first uh, instance, really, of an alternate path. You can scan here to show off a. There's a square path here. Sir. And, uh, Sir. Left side is faster. Sir. Excuse me. This is why I don't like beach. It's it's fine. This what? is that RNG. It used to be on on update 1.0 or 1. Point anything really. It used to be consistent where that guy would go pretty much every time, and uh, now it's not. Now we have to deal with that. Oh, really? and yeah, as you can see here, this is the uh, the artillery just getting just absolutely electrocuted by this stun fist over there. I'm a choke might be 200 pose. I could mess around with this Pik Pikachu. Oh, the champ will be fine. But I don't think I need to. And if I do, the shame on me. The eggs be good. You're fine. I, I, I think everything's in decent. The artillery is also really good. The only times I've really ever shorted this level with this, uh, with this route is when I've messed up the artillery and not gotten it mid electrocution. I probably remember you stunt this. Yeah. Uh, I will take a real stunt this though. Uh, slightly more backwards looking than uh, I sometimes do, but with what I did, I'll make sure that I take a really good photo just to be comfortable. Being able to tell just through raw practice how good the photo that you just took was. Yep. To be able to tell how much effort you really need to put into the later on fix, like, you know, for example, here he was like, yeah, I know that my chance wasn't really great, so I'm gonna put a little bit more effort, lose a little more time to looking backwards, just to make sure that I really do hit the threshold. Yeah, this game is just beautiful. <laughs> So far to me. I don't know what this pose is, but I could not be bothered to stick around. Yeah, okay. That's 600 points. Not that. I think it's still okay, though. Yeah, I'm just fine. I'm no pretty point. sure you still make it comfortably. Uh, yeah, basically, I, as I mentioned, what I was risking is not dealing with the later Pikachu. If I really did not feel comfortable, I can go get... Uh, 4,000 plus points by spending a lot of time making the Pikachu do its thing, but... Yeah, there's this Pikachu that never cooperates that will, uh, you know, you have to lure it over to this little, uh, shovel sticking out of the sand, and it does this little thing, and it's worth an, it's an amazing picture, it's worth a ton of points, but it just, you have to look to the side so much, and, like, it may not seem like much, but it's significantly slower to look to the side for more than a second or two at a time. You start losing seconds very quickly. Yeah, uh, I think uh, when we originally were routing this game, we were very much conscious of the album repeating, and we were just not as conscious of how much time we could actually lose in the course until like, the, uh, the runs that we were doing got more and more competitive and we went, wait, why is this person a minute or two ahead of me? Uh, doing the exact same route. Uh, the answer is also sometimes your uh, your hardware. But we move on to Reef. Uh, Reef, I am very tempted if the Finian goes well to do Magic Bliss, which this game when you do something that's really impressive, it's really hard to sell it because you just didn't do a thing that nobody knows about. Um, but Magic Plus is unnecessarily risky and will save me two to three seconds. Plus the time to look right, which Again, is quite a bit. Again, Magikarp, which we've taken so many pictures of Magic Carp already. It's a repeat. It'll take, I, believe, I don't remember the exact numbers, I think it's like 3.3 seconds or something to register and submit and score a photo of a repeated Pokemon in a level. So literally, if you take a Magikarp photo, you get 2,000... 500 points at least of leeway that like you know you can mess up your other photos as much as you want and you lose three I do have the backup it. it's uh it's Pikachu with your as the community sometimes lovingly calls it Pukki Pukki. okay no magic card. 
we're uh, we're having fun today. So yeah, if, if anything else goes wrong at this point, I mean, you could also even do one or whatever. Yeah, exactly. So. Uh, yeah, the, the reason that Puku Muku is awful is we've already mentioned why it was awful on beach. It's really hard. It's one of the uh, hardest yeah. interactions to do uh, on Reef. And it might not even show up in the sea. It's a 50-50 between it and Octillery. So we are routing for pain. We, uh... This Wingull actually, surprisingly, can be a bit of a troll because there are Mantine that you might not have noticed in the water behind the Wingull. And if you aim incorrectly, then like, it'll be another one of those lock-on things. Just like the, at the very beginning with the Pichu and the Kruki. It'll lock onto the Mantine and it'll say, ah, yes. This photo with the wingle right in the middle of the camera, this is a Mantine. <laughs> and then you get like a 200 point Mantine picture, and you're like, ah! Thank you. Jeez. Everybody else has an issue with this Pelipper, and I was about to trash them for having issues with the Pelipper, and now he's spending way too much of my life, and <laughs> that's not as close to the camera as I wish it was. Without was... magic carp, I just need to be perfect from now on. It's fine. Just do, it was do the, that. I think it was the good pose, plus it was uh, facing you. It's not always facing you every time. It's the champ as well. Oh, you don't do it? I'm pretty sure you can get more points on your champ if you do it from the other direction. So you get a background bonus. And you look backwards. Yeah, if you need points. <laughs> Okay, so the Pikimuku, if I want them, are in the mouths of the Pelipper. Uh, the one that just came over my cursor, this one does have one, but there should be one closer if I want it. I am going to be brave and just declare that I'm going to get a million points. Okay, no more bravery. Those Corsola are awfully placed. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, okay. so this picture is rough because you have to hit the Pelipper with an apple, and then you have to aim, especially at that Puku Muku specifically, and make sure it doesn't count as a Pelipper photo and mess up your other one. It's just, everywhere that you see Puku Muku in this game, it's just rough. <laughs> it's so tiny, it's hard to get a good, any good points out of it, like... It is just not friendly to the speedrun whatsoever. We'll find out. It's gonna, it's gonna be a hit to my ego if I was gonna make it and then I added that Pukumuku, but we can do math. I, I think you were gonna make it. I think you had it. Well, yeah, because the Corsula all decided to run over to the uh, the side of the rock that was, uh, and line it up perfectly. But... You never heard to be a little bit safe. I wiggled these. weird, too. Yeah. It, as long as the uh, Pukumuku shows up in the next level, we'll be fine. That's an amazing opinion. Wow, okay. Um... Torpedo's a good one. It's got that 955 out of 1,000 pose score, which is insanely high. Uh, this is the one I don't know about, but, uh, I think it's... Okay. I panicked. I panicked! It's fine, as long as, uh... Okay. Well, I mean, all it means now is that you're guaranteed that I, I, whatever you take next time is a repeat instead of a 50-50 on it being a repeat. The course, I mean, that's just a beautiful picture. Yeah. And it doesn't give me the points I deserve anyways, because I don't know how to make them pose, but... Uh... 2807, and we're gonna go... No! Uh, <sighs> so my, uh... That... My peaceful photo-taking game has now become... <laughs> hey, uh... yeah, so this level required 35,000, so we were 3,800 points over, so we very definitely did not need the, uh, the people who do, but it's okay. Oh no, it was still, uh, still close. Yeah, by about a thousand points. Yeah, I just thought that Pelipper was, I mean, it was worse than I usually get, but, uh, it was more that it took a long time to take that scared me, I think. Okay, uh, welcome to Undersea. We've been inside of a volcano, and now we're going under the water. Yeah, I was mentioning it in chat as, uh, I was watching a, a kid roll around with a, uh, fire dog in the lava. I'm like, this isn't safe. 
You can't do this. This this is not okay for anybody to let this kid, no matter where they come from, even in the future, to uh, to do this. Um, we have super technology to not drown, but like any issue here, and this poor kid is going to be deep under sea by the end of this whole session. You're not going to turn around for me? One interesting thing with this level is you are underwater, and if you maybe notice when he's throwing these apples, the game like literally changes the physics of how big things works because you're underwater. Yeah, uh, up there with the Pikachu at the very beginning, um, if you're not ready for it, it is uh, going to be a real pain. Um, we do need to make at least one throw on this le level uh, with the Luminion. I spent way too long to get in there. This uh, is another level of one of those uh, Illumina Ore flowers. But, uh, so, <laughs> previously the progression has been pretty, like, you know, pretty standard, right? Like, oh, you need to reach level 2. Oh, you need to reach level 2, but also take a picture of a flower. Volcano was a bit weird. It was like, oh, you need to reach level 2 and then get to the end. And then you have this. Yeah. <laughs> this level is just, like, why? We'll, uh, we'll get into it a bit more when we re-enter this level two more times. <laughs> Here's your pop-off uh, from the raid. We got the Puku Buku. All of my decisions have been uh, justified by RNG. <laughs> um, yeah, this does so... change the photo that we take here. Uh, I'd otherwise take the Whelmer, but we'll uh, we'll take the Puku Buku just flying away and wave to the Whelmer, unless the yeah. Whelmer doesn't flip, and I'll reward it for its behavior. Whelmer always yells at something. 50% of the time it's an artillery that scampers away. 50% of the time it's that Puku Buku. Do flip, do uh, flip, do That's wit, another do thing wit, that got changed uh, by flip. the RNG seating. It used to always do a little somersault flip thing instead of that waddle flap flip thing, and the flip is worth like way too many points. It's yeah, so you get the pose, but also the Wilmer doesn't turn around unless he does yeah. flip. Yeah. Um, yeah, you get a really good pose. And... It's not necessary. <laughs> I really don't need the flip Wilmer to flip, but it is. One really other cool. thing that's really interesting that used to be a thing is on this guy. This is a weirder thing that got changed with the update, but it used to be that you actually didn't need to take a picture of the Illumina flower in this level because there's a frillish hiding off in a cave to the right that we just passed that's lit up by a flower that you can't really see. And it used to be that if you took a picture of that frillish, it would actually count, and he would say, wow, that's the Illumina phenomenon, now I can give you the orbs, but with the update, that just doesn't work anymore, and you're forced to take a picture of the flower. So, yeah, there was a, for a while, we actually thought that was true for everything. Yeah. Uh, and it kind of confused us. Um, on something like Sans Night, there's a illuminated... I want to say it's a Skoropi, like once you move one of the Onyxes. Yeah. Or even the obvious example would have been that Quagsire sitting right next to the flower in Jungle Night. Yeah. But uh, they decided, nah, we're going to take a point picture point. of the uh, oh, yeah, you know. I haven't looked at my paper as much, which is why I forget Bounce Sweets, but... Uh, <laughs> oh yeah, there's no actual routing for like... We are about to get into the part where, if casually, uh, it would be probably the most confusing um, part. Uh, the game gets hard, which is surprising, and has like a little bit of a puzzle that you need to uh, complete. And the real reward of the puzzle is you get to go play a bunch of levels, trying to figure out which uh, level will let you progress in the game. Uh, which is good. I think playing the levels more than once, seeing the additional research levels, all of that is really healthy for, like, 3,999. <laughs> uh, as long as it's not over 5,000, we're fine, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's only 2,100. Yeah. I should have taken it earlier. This might be a bit closer than I'm comfortable with, to be honest. Um, I don't think it's any bad favorite photos, but the Pukumuku is garbage compared to the artillery. This level's another one. Yeah. Yeah, so we need to get to research level 2 to complete the confusing minigame. 
so. <laughs> okay. wow. 148. Damn, okay, that and I good. took photos as I wanted them. There was nothing there that I was particularly unhappy about except for the Puku Muku. See, this uh, is why taking Puku Muku sucks, because normally you would take a Whalmer, which is significantly more points, and the level's just free, because you wouldn't have taken a Puku Muku, but if you go for the Puku Muku repeat strats, then suddenly you're stuck with this. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, I think this is a good time, while we get into our next Undersea, to shout out to our Japanese community, so... Uh, we haven't had too many world record holders in the history of the run. I think it's genuinely, like, Martin, Carrillo, and Ib. Um, but Carrillo and a couple runners he brought with him are Japanese runners, and they've really kept the game alive as a speedrunning game, um, both in that they are putting times on the board, and in one case the world record, uh, but also just annoying. Uh, runners like me to come back. Um, for anybody who runs a Pokemon game uh, and on speedruns.com, there's like little Pokeballs. If you're the world record holder, you get a Master Ball, and that's really cool. Um, I have less asp aspirations for a world record. I know that Ib's a gamer here, um, and if I get a world record, it'll get destroyed by somebody who is going to be frustrated they lost it. Um, I just want one of those Pokeballs, and currently I'm fifth, and so I don't have a Pokeball. And so that's uh, one of the reasons why I've gone back into the 80% the run is I want my top four so I can have one of the four Pokeballs. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, so the way this level works is it's pretty similar to Volcano. The end goal is that in order to unlock the Illumina Pokemon for Undersea, we need to see some ruins at the end, and then the professor will be like, I know where you guys need to go now to find the Illumina Pokemon. Problem is, the ruins are nowhere to be seen along the main path, so we have to figure out a way to actually get to those ruins. And we're going to have to enlist the help of a Pokemon to help us actually get there. And the problem is that the Pokemon just simply doesn't show up at the beginning of the level where we want it to be. So we have to do this... It's a very weird interaction, but we just have to go have these two Clawitzers fight each other, <laughs> and once one of them wins or loses the fight, then the Clawitzers will start showing up at the beginning of the level, and then we can actually have them help us out. Do it! <laughs> but yeah, so there's really two ways to do this here. If you just go through the entire level casually and just, you know, let them finish what they're doing completely that'll also work so you don't actually have to do what we're about to do here but there's a way to speed up the process essentially yeah we're, you... we're gonna take we're gonna take bets in the clotter and hint it's gonna be a loaded bet it's whichever one i hit with the alumina orb i don't 100 know when i'm allowed to start hitting them but i'm gonna hit them and then try and hit them later again you hit one if you just stop there, that's not enough, so you gotta just continue. There we go. So keep going again uh, until they actually. Bubble, 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 bubble. So that charge shot, he hits the dude. Oh no! <laughs> uh, I need to make sure I actually re enter the level. Like yes. an adult who. Yes, yes. But yeah, stuff. so as, as we were saying, you need to see that fight there where they're shooting at each other. That fight needs to finish, whether it finishes naturally by just them missing each other over and over and you just finish the level. Or you can hit one of them with an Illum Illumina Orb, which will make him do a charged shot and he'll just absolutely obliterate the other one and then swim along. And obviously that saves a significant amount of time. And now we have a friendly Clawitzer at the beginning of the level. And I don't know, maybe maybe as a thanks for helping us, uh, have yeah. help as a thanks for helping us, he's gonna get in front of the cart first. Yeah, yeah, uh, it's know. good game design actually, just to make sure that people realize this clodster wasn't there previously. Go, why am I being stopped? Uh, uh, and then the scan will tell us that we have a thing that we can interact with here. Or so we helped him win that fight. Now he'll help us by destroying these rocks. Yeah, I've had a run die to this scan simply not just not registering and not letting me take the alternate path. Like, skip the Clawitzer by like drifting super far right or something? No, I I just shot the Clawitzer and it broke the rocks, but it just wouldn't let me go in there. <laughs> like maybe it was uh, too late or something. But yeah, we haven't really seen drifting uh, be a part of the game yet. 
but I have nothing better to talk about. So, uh, if you look left and right, the cart isn't actually on a like full track. It's got left and right sway. Uh, and when you look to the left or right, it brings the cart to the left or the right. Um, with the interactions that we've avoided with Pokemon, I have done it a little bit, but I haven't really mentioned it with things like the Hippowdon or the Lycanroc. Um, but often we're just stopping the Pokemon from moving into us in the first place. It'll, if we come, didn't in. Pipe. It'll come in a uh, lot of use in a couple of them. I, I counted, out. and Snow Day, hint we're going to a level called Snow Day in the future. Spoilers. Uh, we take seven pictures of Pokemon, and we avoid seven Pokemon. <laughs> Once you get Turbo, as of this point, we don't have Turbo. Uh, if you count both the Snow Run. Right. Yeah. I don't think you should. I think it's really only the, the uh, but, uh, the one yeah. that's behind, but... Yeah, the one that you actually take a picture of that matters. But yeah, we don't have Turbo, so a lot of the interactions are just kind of, you know set up so that there's not too many things that are gonna block you, but once we get turbo, those levels will just have like obstacles left and right that'll just slow you down and we gotta since we're going so fast, we reach them at an earlier point than you would if you were in turbo and so we have to do some very specific things to uh not have them stop us. Oh. Let's show up this direction. Uh, just for giggles, giggles and giggles, I've uh, sent the Frillish off on a mission. Uh, this just allows a future, future interaction. Um, I also wish we got to do Lantern Interactions. Lantern Interactions are really fun, but they are a Research Level 3 thing, and we are still on Research Level 2. Hmm. <sighs> There's this whole quest where you save a lantern and then the lantern shows you the way to a uh, certain legendary Pokemon level. Yeah, uh, just in the rule with legendaries, um, they once you get to the credits, a bunch of legendary Pokemon show up. It's important for like all Pokemon because we just need to take pictures of all Pokemon, so we need to make sure that we also get to the credits. But uh, we are going to see one legend the final boss but it if you uh, haven't completed your your Pokemon snap pokedex you should go do that it's uh 254 or something right now 234 yeah. I think it must be 234 because I think it was 214 before they added 20 yeah we're we're in the hope that they're gonna add DLC it will completely destroy uh, our all Pokemon runs because they will also add new Pokemon yeah and we'll have to start from uh, not square one, yeah, 234, because... Uh, and we have a bit of hope, at least I do personally, because the DLC that's been added is in what I would consider the first half of the game. And so it kind of implied that they could just do DLC that would have the second half of the game. Uh, we're going to talk about my greatest enemy. It's this uh, Kray Dilly. Uh, oh, yeah. If anybody can figure out a way for this Kray Dilly to not block our path, I would love to hear it because we are about to eat awful time loss and we've been talking be nice about all these pokemon that block us and we do various things to stop them but sadly this great dilly we do not have a way to stop it from blocking them. and he hasn't evolved legs yet so yeah we're just going to move very slowly indeed and even like drifting right here doesn't seem to go around him either it's just miserable <laughs> <sighs> okay, uh, this run isn't going to speed up uh, anytime soon, but it does have the most skill testing uh, part coming up here. It's time for me to put on my gamer glasses. I don't know, what what do gamers put? Drink my uh, gamer headset. juice. And... <laughs> you already got the headset on though. <laughs> yeah. Whatever the correct... Uh, gamer nomenclature is here because we're about to go into our third Illumina Pokemon and every second that I spend trying to play the, the mini game is more or less a second lost so Digimon goggles thank you there we go chat <laughs> always with the help 
Yeah, so this is... There have been some things before where, you know, you've had to throw apples at things, throw some orbs at things, light them up, but this is probably the first thing, you know. Probably the biggest section where you have to actually be good at aiming your throws one after the other after the other. Yeah, the reason why this is particularly hard is we are going to be dealing with underwater physics. This will be our third aluminum of oh well no we had two volcarona you okay, made the mistake but you only took a it. you only took a picture i of took one three of them. pictures but only of one of them yeah. <laughs> oh yeah uh, by the way it's wishy washy yeah so you got the wishy washy okay, school form and then now it's not school form anymore and obviously the professor is very picky and he only cares about the school form so Pretty nope. good, pretty good. Right. No, don't move. No, punks. Yeah, these ones, these ones are always hard. No, these they, ones. they always juke you. Like, you'll aim a throw at where they are, and by the time you hit, like, get the orb gets there, they'll have just dodged. They're just, like, massive. I thought I had it there. Are you kidding me? Okay, that's definitely four, but I thought I had it a lot sooner than I did. Essentially, the way this works is you have to hit four of the solo ones, and then they'll all swim off, and they'll make one big spoof one. And then you have to... That's the little gimmick with this one. You know, the Volcaronas were like, hey, you've gotta hit it with some apples to get the fire away. This one, this is the gimmick here. And any moment now. There it is. pictures and then now we just sit here for a while again <laughs> yeah uh so i mean i'll briefly talk about wishy-washy and why this is sad so this wishy-washy has like three different phases uh we're in phase one and you can see the cart is completely stopped and we're like well if the cart's completely stopped maybe phase two or phase three or faster no uh Stop the wishy-washy yeah, just swims around longer uh, the later you get into the level. And while the actual small fish are much easier to hit because they just fly right in front of your face, uh, it's even with the uh, of the mediocre uh, light up on the wishy washies, uh, it's still significantly faster. Uh, so, water physics are garbage. Oh. Goodness, I didn't realize how much I, I never throw apples um, on this level, but you can see how much faster they sink. <sighs> Time to go pull up the list of things I wanted to discuss because uh, <laughs> this is this is pretty much the last big auto scroller. Yeah. There are still what two maybe that you can really consider an auto scroller, but. Uh... One of them will have, will, will have turbo pretty soon, so there's not too many sections left in the run where you have anything like this. But yeah, in all Pokemon, this Illumina level is similar like this, so you still got your uh, your bathroom break, but as we were mentioning, the, uh, the undersea sections that we were just doing and things like the uh, Volcano 2 were all... We would all be taking photos during them, so there would be much less of a old section. But yeah, it gets a bit more interesting from here on. Turbo engine might not seem that fast, but when you compare it to the speed that we've been going at, it's it's yeah. it's, it's significant. <laughs> it, if you were to just see it like blindly without any context of the game, you'd be like, that's pretty slow. But... Uh, with Militech, it's really hard for me to tell. Uh, sorry, our spoilers. Uh, we're going to be taking a picture of Militech shortly, but uh, when you go through the level and then have to go through it again in other categories, the the change doesn't you don't feel it. Um, you really only feel it when you're like trying to take photos. You're going, oh, why is this so much harder than it was a uh, a moment ago? Do you have a favorite song in this game? Like a Melodics, favorite level? Actually, <laughs> Melodic, yeah. the melodic Illumina one is really good. Uh. That, I think, was something I was going to mention when we get to Melodic. Melodic is, is, is the same for me. This one doesn't have too many notes. Dun, dun, dun. 
Hey, but remind me what other games you play. You seem to be popular with the Pokemon community. I've been doing, I've been doing Let's Go Runs mainly recently, but I also do uh, Crystal Randos. There's actually a uh, extreme full item Rando as part of this marathon, I believe, and I do I do things like that. Yeah. Thank you, doing. by the way, to the marathon runners. Uh, when I signed up, I accidentally uh, missed a two o'clock in the morning period, and they're like, "Cool, we'll put you at two o'clock in the morning." You European? I'm like, "No, I live in America." They changed the whole schedule just to work uh, with me, and I'm actually really happy with it. We ended up with the, as far as I know, the three games that are new to this uh, marathon, with. Arceus that happened this morning, uh, new Pokemon Snap, and then the BDSP run that I believe is coming up next. Yeah. Um, so if you're looking for stuff that you potentially haven't seen before, uh, today's the day. Uh, that not to be, uh, not to say the other games that are being run aren't new. Uh, we have a lot of uh, like unique runs, a lot of like alternative starters uh, that are happening. So if you want to see like a Pokemon Red that's being done with the Clefable, I believe that's happening at some point, those sort of things, so... As this game will get more exciting here in literally just a moment, um, but this marathon is only also just getting started. Yeah. Uh, the Arceus run... Right, is it, two fi is it 250 or 350? Uh, it happened just before this. Um, I believe everything else is going to be on YouTube if you missed it, or you can always watch the VOD. About three hours and forty-five to fifty minutes. Yeah. But yeah, it was uh, that was the one right before this. And yeah, I would highly recommend. It was a really good race. I would highly recommend checking out either the vlog or, as mentioned in the chat, the, uh, the YouTube video on the channel. That's a nice butt. Let's go. All right. Now we're done with that. That's definitely the longest section of the game where we won't be doing much. So. Back to the gameplay. Now we move on to Forest. Now, Forest was one of these levels that on version one, or version one before the update was very, very consistent. So the, the big gimmick with Forest is that there are four seasons. So you can there would be there's a summer season in the middle section with different Pokemon. There's spring, fall, autumn. You can only really get summer and spring on research level one, and on update version 1, it was always summer. And summer was always easier, so we were always happy with it. But then now, there seems to be some sort of RNG to it. We don't know exactly how it works. We think we're, we're theorizing that it has something to do with the count of how many levels you enter. But sometimes you can get spring and you route things differently. Which, you and know, I, well, for a long time, <laughs> routed it. fairly confident that I'm gonna get summer here. Yeah. Uh, because we did have the issue uh, previously on Jungle Night, um, this isn't going to be like a clean run into forest. I believe it's still going to be summer, but if I get spring, we're going to be making stuff up. It's going to be fun. Yeah. But yes, yeah, so there's some. So this can be either summer or spring, and summer is significantly easier to get the amount of points that we need of 10 photos rather than 11. If you get spring, you would uh, probably just go for the 11 strat because it's too inconsistent to get 10 photos. But yeah, for the longest time, I thought that this was just a pure 50-50, so I had it routed in a way that was unluckily giving me. I spent um, so much effort trying to get that kick on to behave, <laughs> yeah, was, and then he, really at the last one. moment, turns around, and I'm just don't, I'm not taking a tail picture of you, kick You can't trick me. Yeah, that was perfect. Yeah, uh, Arceus is getting improved uh, for a run that had a lot of talk about being really hard to uh, like break the game. They've uh, done a really good job. Hey! He's like, not even 50-50. He usually turns away there so that he turned his head to us is good. Please be summer. Please be summer. That noise is concerning. We are doing spring. Let's have fun. Okay, uh, Bulbasaur is off in the far left, and he is the problem child here. If I yep. can get Bulbasaur uh, with, you said, an orb ib? I think so, yeah. Okay. Yeah, you'll want to bonk a deerling, probably bonk sauce, but bonk on pheasant. If you bonk on pheasant by the tree, you can get a really good points on it as well. But yeah, probably want to look for orbing it right now. Yep, that should do. Bonk one of these guys. 
Aren't they, don't they all line up for the three? Oh, yeah, at the end, yeah. The, the unpheasants, if you want to bonk one of them. Oh, I just took, I thought the uh, apple pick was good. If you bonk one of them, it's like 4900 sometimes. It's like amazing. Okay. I would. I got try the fire in one too. Specific. Yeah. The bat photo is. I can hear saves. happiness, which is good. Happiness is what I yeah, want. Yeah, the, the problem is that that was probably too early. There's a way to do this level really well, but I think you orbit too early, so they're not going to be. Oh, wait, no, you got the jumping. Nice, yeah, it's actually off. So now, yeah, that's because actually this perfect. is spring, I've already got the Kecleon, don't need to worry about the Kecleon. You'll need to take um, Cham and Shift Tree. Yeah, exactly. This okay. actually might be doable in still 10 Pokemon if you... Nope, he didn't feel like doing it, it's fine. If you select you. The, uh, the correct unpleasant picture, this might actually be on, yep. on track for I, 10 Pokemon. I agree. Make sure you get a trap and then you can do the next one, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Turn around. Yeah, so that's a bit of a... That's a spring is a bit harder because that Bulbasaur, Deerling, and Sawsbuck right at the end are very tough to quit, get to cooperate. And you also are forced to take a worse Pancham and a worse... Oh wait, you know, you don't need Pancham. No, you want to do 10 because uh... you got Deerling, right? Yeah. You just need the shift tree and the tree. Uh, yeah, and I'm feeling fairly confident. When I say fairly confident, I mean I can risk it for the biscuit. Yeah, uh, I, I think you're good. If I get a good shiftery. Yeah. If not, there's low tad and there's also Pancham and there's also Dronko. So you've got so many backups. Yeah, that part can be a bit rough with a. Uh... I'm surprised that I got. Um... Yeah, this I thought you were too early. I thought you were way too early, but you're it's, good. It's, you. Point at me. You punk! You didn't do the thing! If, I think you have to orb him. Okay, well now you'll need to take another picture. Well now I need to take it. yeah. Now I need another picture. Yeah. Uh, uh, I think you have to orb him before he does the thing. So you have to knock him down, and then when he turns around, you throw an yeah, orb, okay. and then he'll do it. I... Maybe I was just too close. Which is... That also might be it. Yeah, yeah. And he would have he would have done it if it worked him anyways. anyways but we'll, we'll we will add a, a, a Drompa. Uh, while we're on the topic though, Beware is one of the cooler Pokemon in this level. Um, we're both going to take a Bearware picture, but we're also going to do the Bearware boost. Shoutouts to uh, High Score Community who pointed this out fairly early in the life. And I there he did it. I think that was close. I, think that's close. I believe it was. But yeah, so that's another uh, spot where it just pushes you faster. Just like that Tyrantrum from earlier on. But yeah, okay. this should be pretty Yeah, because the... the Drompa will more than cover up for the missed points on the shift tree. Yep. Yeah, uh, similar to Volcano, it's a lot of unique Pokemon uh, beyond that Magikarp. And I've seen routes that we've done of this, which Magikarp just doesn't get you enough points to the next level, so I've even seen non-Magikarp routes. Uh, that being said, welcome to what might be the first marathon, uh, like, or even, like, to a lot of people, uh, Spring. Uh, obviously people have seen your world record, that you did that on Spring for whatever That's reason, me. but... <laughs> I didn't was... get I didn't get the uh, the good the good Bulbasaur deer link, so I had to do an eleven photo too. But yeah, now that I know that it's not pure RNG, whenever I get back to running this, I'll definitely not be doing spray. Or that too early. Apple did too early. Give me the flower points, please. See, there you go. Thank you. A yep. really great on He's that's... jumping. Jumping yeah. is great. Yeah, these couple pictures save spring. Five thousand. I'll suppose I thought I took. About yeah, thousand. You should be disappointed in yourself. Yeah, no, the the deerling. Uh, I thought I took it when, or maybe I took two photos. I thought I took it when uh, it was on its hind legs, which I know is the the pose you're looking for. Probably like, safer, nine of the size there. Always fun. Shiftry, you punk. Probably better that you actually messed up the shiftry because otherwise you would have just gone in thinking you had enough and the dealing might have ruined it. Yep. 
but we're completely safe now, because this Dronko will cover up for everything that we might have missed. That's one nice thing about this game, and with most of these levels, there are backups near the end, so if you reach a point where you're like, oh man, I think I messed something up, what do I do? You just take an extra picture and you lose 7 seconds instead of 30. Here we are. Forest is complete, and now we can move on to our fourth Illumina Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, but thankfully, I have lots of things to talk about while we're in Militech. Uh, one, we've already mentioned it, the music's lovely, uh, but I'm going to talk over it, because we get to talk more about Turbo, and I want to do it here while we're in Militech, because we're going to have some turbo. actual gameplay at a fast, uh, frantic pace uh, after Militech is done. Yeah. yeah so as, uh, as, as we said, it might not seem as fast but it's a significant change of pace when you have to take these same you know so many pictures in close proximity but this time you're moving at like i don't know significantly faster speed i think it is actually genuinely twice as fast which is is it twice as fast i didn't yeah. want to say that without being sure um let's give Militech its due so this is our fifth illumina pokemon fourth actual Lumen Pokemon, because I'm cheating by calling uh, both of the... Oh. So beautiful. You don't want to hit it early anyways, it blocks the cart. And... Up here. Really? One, two, three. What a nice neck. Uh, yeah, so just to go through them, we've done Meganium, which is, I think, a cool map. Okay, I did it too quickly, got socked anyways. Uh, we've done Meganium, which is a cool mascot. Uh, we've done Militech, which is like classically the most beautiful Pokemon. We've done Wishy Washy, which is a really cool Pokemon. And we've done uh, Volcarona, who's a Gen 5 Pokemon. I've, I think actually one of the best Gen 5s. I, I love trashing on Gen 5, just because it isn't my Gen 1 or why you not put Sandshrew in the game for once. Maybe my Pikachu, uh, but Volcarona is actually a really cool Pokemon, and they need more legendaries that aren't dragon shaped, so. Or even like pseudo legendaries that aren't dragon shaped. But, let's get into Turbo. So, Turbo is going to be a button that I'm going to be holding. I really don't want to let go of the button because it turns out in a speedrun, uh, going fast is fast. The thing that's going to happen with Turbo is one, the photos are going to be a bit harder. Um, I, I just need to be more precise with my lining up because I'm going to, if I miss the opportunity, just fly by the Pokemon. Uh, the other thing is, compared to going slowly, uh, where we can like interact with the Pokemon, we haven't really had to interact with too many Pokemon that get in the way. Uh, with Turbo, every other Pokemon that we interact with wants to jump in front of the cart. Uh, Snow Day is going to be first. I mentioned seven different Pokemon try and commit insurance fraud just jumping in front of the cart and getting getting paid so uh we have tricks and ways to avoid uh, those sort of things um with snow day at the very end if everything seems to be going well i will go for a trick that i accidentally found on what was it wednesday so yeah. three days ago uh if i fail it it will eat time loss as a reason um I don't know what we're calling it yet. I'm, I'm down for it to be a trick named after myself, though I don't think I get to name, it's like giving yourself a nickname. Um, <laughs> but the other name of it will be potentially like Spiel Skip Skip, because we're skipping Spiel Skip. Um, along those lines. Or somebody will just call it Spiel Skip and we'll uh, just use the old name despite the fact that we're now skipping Spiel Skip. Um, we'll have Snow Knight which is also a monstrous level and eventually um, assuming that I get through those cleanly actually even if I don't get through those cleanly we'll still get to go cave and cave is a big ball of stress oh, I know yeah. uh, in the world record run you were on my kib and you were just like I just need to get through this I just need to get through this yeah uh, you cave don't have like a heart rate tracker but I assume you were you were pumping oh, for sure cave is like probably the last Cave is the last level, really, where you take more than one picture, pretty much. 
So cave is the last thing where you have a real point threshold that you need to meet. The rest of that is just it's other things that can be a bit stressful, but no real like I need to take good pictures type thing. And I had just finished Snow Knight where I had made it by exactly five points, and so I was just panicking. I was like, oh my god, I'm not gonna make it on cave, I'm gonna mess it up. It's a lot easier to be stressed, you don't get like any breaks or something, you just go straight into it. Yeah, uh, if you need to grab popcorn, uh, that was your last opportunity. This train does not stop for a fair bit. I mean, we could, if you don't like lore, uh, you could step out um, <laughs> on the final, or not the final boss, but the professor's final boss until we find out that there is a true final boss. Boss is a bit strong. This is a photography game. It's the closest thing to a boss that you'll get in this game. Yeah. Uh, I mean, to be honest, I, this is how I look right now. Professor's got my mood. I'm just arms crossed. I can't do it <laughs> because I need to be mashing, but... <sighs> Everyone else can do it in spirit for you. Yeah. By the way, shout out to uh, Todd's fashion. I love his gloves. The, uh, Great. everybody but Phil here has some drift, and I appreciate it, truly. Really. Yeah, we had all, all the other Luna Pokemon, we got, like, the butt pictures, and then Melodic is just neck. <laughs> what do you think the professor does with those goggles? Like, what is he needing eye protection beyond his already normal glasses that he also already has? Maybe, maybe the, maybe the Illumina, maybe the Crystal Boom is gonna blind him or something. It would be on theme, like in a, a game that they've put us in the ocean and in a volcano, uh, it turns out the Illumina are also just made of asbestos. Yeah, just, just, there's, just, touch. Like, there's just like UV radiation coming out of it. <laughs> <laughs> You're gonna get cancer. It's fine. Uh, this is like one of the few Pokemon games that you're not destroying your crime syndicate, so it's one of the, uh, the easier ones to be fair. Okay, let's do this. Welcome to Snow Day. This has been my most practice because I've been trying to get this uh, skip down at the end, so yeah. hopefully I don't mess anything else up on the way to the skip. So, it, you'll notice that it'll be a bit faster comparatively. It might not seem that Yay. fast, but with how fast Pokemon around you are moving, like that fur, it just runs by you. If you don't get the timing right, you just miss it. Yeah. Uh, we've already missed one Pokemon, by the way. Uh, if I didn't slow down a little bit there, which I just did by zooming in instead of taking off the boost, uh, we were to run into the Bear Tick. Our next Pokemon that we're going to be avoiding is this Mammoth Wine. I'm going to do it by just looking to the right here until I think there. I like to block you. Take a second photo. Avoid this one, too. It's fine. Uh, but everything in this level does not appreciate your existence. Quickly take that zoomless, Let's zoom down level. here, and then I've got a cute little route change because I don't like running into these guys anymore. I'm just gonna look left and then straight and just take a different snow rent. This little chap up here. Um, when you turn around, by the way, uh, if you hold the back button, it does it instantly compared to like the drift over on right so I don't actually spend that much time looking backwards if I do that and then we have one more Pokemon we got tell off no spiel hit the magic carb and let's go for the skip go I'm gonna race this pip up and hope that this field doesn't catch us so that spiel has a tendency to just roll there you go. That, so that spiel has a tendency to just roll right in front of you, and then you're just kind of stuck there. The Piplups also have a tendency to run in front of you, and you're stuck there. So it's a very... It's it's a lot more involved than it looks to actually get in between the spiels and the Piplups and not have either of them block you. Yeah, uh, and that is... Not the first time that's been done, because I've made a few clips of it for other people to try, but that's definitely the first run that uh, it's been done purposely, and I'm really happy about that. Um, photos here should be pretty chill. Uh, Sans Day is a pretty friendly goal, and keep it friendly because we 
when you're boosting, you don't really want to have to think about it too much. Yeah, at this point in the run it becomes, you know, we've, we've still got the whole, you know, wanting to take as few photos to reach the goal while also taking repeats, which is why, as mentioned, we've got magic carps everywhere because they're just, it's a repeat again, it's just only 3 seconds versus 7, it's just so worth it to incorporate when we can. But on top of that, we've got to incorporate uh, being able to boost to everything, being able to dodge everything. Yeah, uh, one of the small benefits, by the way, of uh, this heal skip, other than it's clearly faster, uh, is you get better piplups. Piplups just. I can see how. Uh, that was like a poor piplup for because um, I took me a while to, uh, in my excitement, to actually line up the photo. Yeah, I can see that being a thing that would make some sense. Okay, uh, we're on to Snow Knight, which, if it wasn't for Cave, would also be uh, one of the harder levels. Snow Knight has a slight advantage in the fact that it is an forced re-entry level, and so on the re-entry you can waste a 5 or 10 seconds and get like a backup sand slash or something, but... It's the pip club that always gets me. Um, yeah. <laughs> When you do these revisits, you have to get the right star value, and this Piplup goes from walking to being surprised to walking really quickly, and he's a jerk. I'm not going to bother with uh, messing with the idea of Meganium Skip, but shoutouts to our high school community, Gip didn't get it. Uh, this M Mighty Yenna here, not Meganium Skip, M uh, sometimes doesn't do what he usually does, or she usually does, I think. That's actually one of the smaller ones. Can you please? Thank you. There's these guys, as you can see, they just <laughs> all block you, and there is a way that might just be completely RNG to get them to. Uh, okay, we've got worse snow routes. Time to invent uh, a new just route. Take, take Voltix or something, I don't know. <laughs> uh, oh, can't trick me. Okay, fuck you. Thank you. You actually could just take this time and just take that sand slash on the re-entry. That might actually be the best, I'm not sure, certain. There. Uh, got more flowers to care about. Uh, we bonk that ferret, by the way, because it makes that mighty Anna, uh easier to interact with. Like, it doesn't block us if we it chases the ferret quicker or something like that um could do a re-entry piplup and just kind of like st stay the path honestly i think that might just be it is just be more careful with this piplup here and know what i've done i sing to the jinx i don't know why i used to think it Interacted. Let's hit our skip. Is an interaction, but I think it also just does it anyways. Okay, his heels are moving. I yes. ran into the pit clubs because I'm a fool. This is something we like to call Obama skip. <laughs> yep, this is Obama skip. Sit down, sir. We got Obama snow there, clearly. That's the Pokemon's name for sure. And uh, if you don't do all this complicated stuff with the feels and the Obama itself, then it will in front of me. Also, that Mamoswine picture is probably one of the only examples in the run, other than maybe the Gengar afterwards, where we deal with this, but so the way the size works in this game is obviously if you take a picture and you know, the Pokemon, its entire body fills the entire screen, you got good size points, up to 2,000. But the game will also allow you to do face shots, where if all you get in the photo is the Pokemon's face, and it'll still count that as 2,000 sides. It can recognize that you just were taking a picture of the face and not the body. And that Mammoth Swine is a pretty good example of that. And... Restore by Diana. And then we'll need to check the pit blood. Yeah. This sand flash should be need extra as well. Yeah, it's one star. Okay. Interesting. That's annoying. This is good though. For sure. Yeah, you're probably fine on points. So just... Yep. The backup, the backup, backup. We're, we're, we're back to math. Arceus, they were joking about math, and I'm like, yep, <laughs> we're doing more of it, don't worry. Okay, I lost it. Uh, that's two star. Okay. So, I'm gonna do flip first while I know he's doing one star, and then do the mighty Anna, and I should be fine. Instead of just panicking and taking a, a new, unique Pokemon. 
I yeah. think this is the correct way to go about it too. Yeah, so as we mentioned, you won't get any new points towards research if you take the same star value multiple times. So if he takes another two star pip love, it just won't count for anything towards the, you know, whatever the number is that we need to be on this level, 45k. Do that in one mighty Anna too is the other option. Oh yeah. It's, that's risky, but... No, you, you can do this. This is very free with just mighty Anna and then pip love. Yeah. As long as we you can take a 4,000 mighty Anna. <laughs> I'm tempted. I think it's faster to just take... I think it's... Mighty Anna yeah. and pip love, because then you're not delaying at all. Yeah. You'd have to be. You'd have to spend less than three seconds getting up to four thousand on top of just insta picks. Yeah, middle dog. Middle middle dog is a rule here. Yeah. And so here's our forced re-entry because we had a crystal bloom in this level. Please, I saw the cursor. Trying to say that that was a third Piplup pick. I need to make sure this actually picks the right Piplup, I think. Because I think it, it should might. automatically. You should get an yeah. Well, actually, you won't get an because you took a one Uh, star. maybe, yeah. Um, maybe it was two star by the time that the uh, person was trying to troll me. Yeah. You're good. Yep, we're good. But yeah. And that's the points that we needed. And now we can move on to cave. But yeah, as you can see, those two levels went by much quicker than. Yeah, uh, on to cave. Um, if I hit magic carp first try, I'll do it. Otherwise, I'm just gonna do do what I do. Yeah. Um, and again, as always, magic carp is optimal because magic carp is a repeat. We've said this like every level so far. <laughs> but yeah, cave, it's a bit harder to get the magic card because you have to like, while turboing, aim, and the, while you're holding turbo, that the way that like the, the orbs that you're throwing go, it completely changes the trajectory. So it can One be a bit rough. Is, like orbs in the game for some reason. Like I just yeah. hit it when I don't feel like I should a lot of yeah. the time. But So it's a bit rough to actually. Hit the shot, and it's not worth spending too much time on. If you spend more than sit like four seconds trying to get the magic carp, then you're actually just losing time to just taking a unique in the first place. So you go for it like one time. If you miss it, you're like, oh well, I'll just do a unique and eat the time loss. Like Optiltic. in the bottom left, what I thought it. Was this is play. the one time you get to hear the music. Hey, turn it off. You okay. can actually orb the Gengar there. I don't know if it does anything I, to points. Yeah, but... I'm the one who did that. Yeah, and does it not do like... anything? It makes it from 4 star to 3 star. Does it help? I, get, I heard the magic carps just go. Nice. You bonk this blade twice, it turns around. Then you immediately look off to the side. There's this magic carps that's yeah, bonk as get the orbs. Um, sir? Sir? sir. Robot sir. tried to block that. Now you need a Krogon Creeler here real quick. As the you can see, a lot's happening at once. Early, I'm just going to take every damn Pokemon in this level and call it day. Yeah, it's unfortunate that it's just the same music over and over again. But well, not every Pokemon because you didn't take the Noibat. <laughs> oh, yeah, true. Shout out to Noibat for being the stupidest thing I route into all Pokemon. Yeah. Instead of just, you know, taking the Geodude on the side. Easier. Right. I've always taken the other Geodude in the Nook. I'm gonna take three just so Auto Picker has more chance of not screwing me. I over. think that's a higher star value, so we'd always take that anyway. You think? Yeah. I'm pretty yeah, sure but... there's one of those poses there is two star. If I remember correctly. And that was cave. A lot yeah, all at once. <laughs> shoot pointing out the uh, alternative flute tunes. It's one of the best things. When I found out I found out like five years after, like this is like two thousand four and I was like, wait, there's multiple uh, alternate flute tunes. Yeah, that would have been so nice. Those sort of like day. Easter eggs are just brilliant when you just find out I mean, about them. I could even have seen them doing things in this where like having a different flute tune would cause a different interaction. Like, that yeah. could have been cool. DLC. DLC. What a cool Gengar photo. Yeah. I, 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 I know that the game doesn't like it, 
um, because it wasn't as centered, but that it was on the left side there, I think that just made it look cooler. Uh, this is my punishment for taking three Crobat photos. Yeah, it's fine. We're yeah, gonna see, be well over, by the way. Star. Huh? Yeah, we took an extra, an extra picture compared to what we needed, I think. Actually, yeah. Because you got the magic card, you could have skipped like the yep. Sableye or the Geodude. But then I uh, took a super late program just because I spent way too much time in the graveyard because yeah, a the... Crobat literally tried to come over and eat the photo. Very yeah, rude. Crobat has a tendency to do that. I've also had Crobats kill my Joltik photos before. It just it flaps I... the wing right in front of it. I didn't know what you were like, talking oh, about. No. And as soon as you mentioned it in like a Discord or whatever, uh, it immediately happened to me. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> but yeah, there's a there's a spot where a crowbat flies directly in front of your camera and the wing just completely covers your line of sight for a second and if you happen to take a photo during that specific time, <laughs> couple frames that it's on your screen, you just get a pure purple picture that doesn't Oh count no, as I meant to go into cave too. I not a big okay, deal. That's fine. No big deal. Um I tricked myself because like, nope, this is an all Pokemon thing and I went Wait, no. No, no, That's no. Actually, it's actually an update thing. Before the yeah. update, you weren't able to change research levels without heading back to the main camp. But now, post-update, they added a little quality of life thing where you can simply press retry, and when you press retry, it'll actually ask you which research level you want. So that saves, like, I think, at least 30 seconds, but probably more, because I think you do it multiple yeah. times. Uh, I think it's 23. Uh, last time I timed, just having to yeah, do it. But is but... it only one time? No, it's multiple times in all posts, probably. Uh, you get some value in like undersea with the yeah. um, with the plots or stuff, but I'm not sure if that was in the original. Uh, basically, it just makes up for the time that we lose when at the very beginning of the level we get the DLC announcements telling us. What are you guys so loud? There's also actually a little bit more time saved from the update because now uh, any time that you finish a level with zero pictures taken, there used to be an animation that played and then a text box that would say, oh no, you didn't take any pictures, do whatever next time or whatever, and that got significantly shortened with the update. So every time there's a level that we uh, don't take I, any I photos, we save like <laughs> to five to ten seconds. So in the end, uh, it adds up that the update is actually faster than the old update, despite uh, despite it having a whole extra cutscene. It makes up for that. Multiple cutscenes. I mean, it adds three different sections of just time loss, but uh, it yeah, surprisingly, it's actually faster to play on the most recent patch. We'll see if that's true. If we get some DLC, if I keep on saying the word DLC, maybe it'll happen. I don't know who I need to beg to, if it's uh, Nintendo or Pokemon Company or who, but I want more of this game, please. Okay, uh, we are... It's not a break for me, because I have to sit here and hold the button and take a picture of a flower. But we're gonna go to ruins. We have Steelers first. Right? What? Steelix. Oh, Steelix! Yeah, let's do Steelix <laughs> first. This is, this is how I... After cave, looking down, arms crossed, guess I'll reset. Or even worse, like, I guess I'll finish the run because it's so close to being done, but cave is mean. Um... Uh, Cool. We've uh, we've done our menuing issue. We've done our had to visit a level again, and I forgot bounce or uh, forgot bounce speed. So I hit all the marks of a good marathon run. We've taken yeah. three pictures of every single aluminum Pokemon, which is important for a marathon. So nobody's uh, caught on to just yet, at least with the obvious uh, way. Uh, this is by far the most dangerous level for a kid, by the way. I don't understand why we're letting a little girl into this cave with a Steelix who's like clearly has no regard for our life. I think it might honestly be more dangerous than the uh, like the undersea because if we get hit by a bunch of rocks that fall in, I mean the pain was also really dangerous. Yeah, but like, what are you gonna do? Like the Tyrantrum's just gonna eat the cart? Actually, yeah, that's not pretty likely. Uh, 
yeah, so this is Steelix. Thankfully, because we have boost, it's not particularly uh, a long level. And even more thankfully, uh, the game gives us a bit of reprieve. Uh, the mini game is actually really hard. I think I might have failed it the first time I did it uh, casually because I was boosting, and the game was like, "Don't boost him. You can't tell me what to do." Uh, but the Steelix does show up here at the end of the level if you don't bother to interact with the game up until here. You're supposed to throw some apples down in holes, and then the Steelix will pop out to annoy it. But if it just shows up at the end here, it's like, "Hi, take a picture of me." Surprisingly, one of the actually easier Illumina levels. Uh, and now we get a in-game cutscene. Um, like we're still in the level, and at the very end of the level we can boost. Uh, but this is our lore, and we can make fun of the professor more. <sighs> I'm gonna go get a lossage, because it turns out talking for two hours is like, hard my voice. <laughs> yep. But, uh, yeah, so, lore-wise, we're at a point where the professor's like, Oh, wow, I found this other island. There's this fifth Illumina Pokemon, Steelix. And then you find this at the end of the Steelix level. And there's this, like, wall painting, and it's like, Whoa, what's all this? And, uh, well, the spoiler alert is that the painting seems to point towards a sixth Illumina Pokemon. Or a sixth entire island that, uh, that they didn't know about. Right there yeah, in the, the middle. The meatballs are coming. Gotta watch out for the meatballs. Oh yeah. <laughs> I once had a lovely idea that if we ran out our camera gear because we're still in game, that it would let us just end the level. It doesn't work like that. Yeah, but sadly. I do it as a tradition at this point. Yeah. Um, yeah. So if we count them. Even the, uh, even the ruins got it incorrect. They only have one Volcarona. <laughs> and the maybe, way maybe there was, like, some sort of cloning operation that happened after this mural was made. Yeah, so the Wishiwashi is, like, a hundred Illumina Pokemon, actually, so... Ooh. But, uh, we have suspiciously have a blank in the middle. And this game's, like, year and a half, two years old now, so I think we can spoil it. Uh, I would stick around because we do have a a cutscene skip coming up that yeah. we're uh, we're proud of. It won't uh, look too exciting because it, again, it's just kind of not doing something, but it's pretty significant. It's like a whole minute of time saved, impressively, like precisely a minute. Yeah, it's like almost exact. I've never tried to throw an apple at the end of this cutscene, and I. You can, like, throw it. apples, like, through the wall. The collision in this place is really wacky. 72 photos. One of them was definitely the Steelix. In fact, three of them were. Not 69 of them weren't. Nice. Yeah, there we go. Uh, this is... We had already broken our 5,000 barrier. Uh, this is definitely gonna do it. That's just a nice, cheesy smile from our Steelix friend. Yeah. Yeah, we're getting very close to the end here. Yep, and I kind of jumped the gun earlier, but we are now have another reprieve. Uh, everything with the turbo. I don't get to like walk away beyond um, that small cutscene that we had there. The it's kind of a weird little interaction. I think you're meant to like take photos and be excited about it, but the only thing we need to do mechanically is get the Illumina. Uh, we yeah. no longer need to take photos of any of the Pokemon that are around. That does not mean that the Pokemon that are around are not going to be interacted with. Um, we've mentioned previously patch 1, like the original patch, and that patch had good Hound Dooms. I think it's like the biggest thing that has changed from uh, patch 1 to patch 2 is now our Houndoom RNG is RNG and how lucky we were previously. Um, there are a bunch of dogs in this level and all the dogs are going to try and jump in front of the cart and bark at us. 
and be mean. Uh, they are dark types, uh, so it's not too surprising, but we're gonna prank them. But, so, this is oddly one of the couple levels in the game that doesn't require you to hit research level 2 to actually do anything. Instead, you've got this nice little uh, puzzle mini game thing that we'll have on our next entry. Right now, all he cares about is just getting this picture of the flower because you need the Illumina orbs to complete the puzzle. I'm pretty sure my first casual run, I did not take a picture of that flower. Then got really confused because this whole area is flower themed. Which used to count for the uh, flower in this level, by the way. Not optimal in this, but it would have been optimal in all Pokemon, but not anymore. Because <laughs> they just don't let you. Uh, we've broken the security protocol. Uh, Hound Doom, don't you dare, thank you. So the rest of this level is just getting to the end without getting stopped by the dogs. Pretty much. Nope. There we go. Yeah, uh, we're gonna be here in just a moment, and all these cool Pokemon that we're seeing on the side, including this suspiciously placed uh, Golurk, are gonna be coming into play here shortly. We've got one more hectic turbo run to go through, and it's six flowers, two Pokemon, four Hound Doom in a dream. <laughs> but yeah, so essentially, you guys saw all those flowers that were scattered around there, all those weird statues. Essentially, the, uh, the gist of what's going to happen is he's going to need to hit all of them with Illumina Orbs. So now that we have our Illumina Orbs, we're going to need to hit all of them, and that'll unlock the, uh, the final level of the game, which is exactly what we need. And it'll involve some pretty cool strats, actually. Yeah, uh, we've done some impressive throwing um, previously. This is going to be only throwing. Like, we're we're just throwing orbs and boosting, and it's going to be fun. Uh, and hopefully it gets showed off. I've been excited about a few things that are less obviously exciting. Um, just new strats that I've pulled off and, and those sort of things. And Really, I've been excited on camera, just in part because I want to try and impart what is exciting and what isn't. Uh, this just looks cool if you can hit it. Everything, everything that we do here, if it goes smoothly... That looks fantastic. So, hopefully, I can pull it off because I really want to make a show of it. Yeah. First, let's not run into some Hound Dooms. Yeah. Always, always the Hound Doom, always in the way. No matter where it's at, if you see a Hound Doom, it's in the way. And you have to, like, we still have to slow down and lose, like, a second because if we don't, we bonk into the Hound Doom and then we lose even more than a second. But yeah, now the real part begins. Uh, please, keep on walking, keep on walking. Keep, no. I think it just needed... Okay. I tried. So here, where he's drifting left, another example of drifting, trying to go to the left of the Hound Doom. Didn't cooperate this time. Yeah, and annoyingly, if you like try and like bonk this Hound Doom, he just sits there and growls at you, and it's like, okay. Uh, even more time loss. <laughs> but here we go. I get in the first try. No. Excited. No, don't you dare. Get we'll it. find out I got it on the last one. But... Yeah, so essentially what he was trying to do there was there was that go lurk way off in the distance. And you essentially you need to hit him with an orb at some point, just like these Eldegoss up here. You need to hit them with an orb so that they move out of the way because you need to hit these flowers. That's this purple one here is three, this green one will be four, you're gonna have to get right in the middle of them, nice. Okay, it looks like he didn't hit the Golurk. You can snipe the Golurk from way over at the beginning and he'll already have moved out of the way, but now that he hasn't moved, we're gonna have to wait for him to move. Only a couple seconds. 
Yeah, Not I've never skill. just hit one Eldegoss, by the way. I was curious if I was going to be able to get it or not. Apparently, You uh, hit the best one. Yeah. If you hit the left or the right one, not the middle, it's very rough. Yep. And that was that. We hit all the flowers, and now, uh, for some reason, that means that we are blessed with being able to go do the final level now. We channeled the power of all the islands into one. Get to see a cool little cutscene. Yeah, and, we and now we have to go do uh, what I'm going to call Ib Skip for no reason. <laughs> Is it Ib or Ib, by the way? I've heard I, I'm good both. with either. Yeah. Ib, Ib, Ib. I'm good with any of those. I gotta give you credit for this so I can get my uh, my skill skip skip oh, yeah. uh, named after me. We, we yeah, gotta yeah. just be a, uh, a friendly <laughs> speedrunning community with our names. <laughs> but yeah, essentially, uh, we're gonna head into the next level. I'm gonna wait until we see the first cutscene. Yeah, no, because we're gonna I, see a tree, and yeah, I, I mean, there's explain. a couple tree. But it could be Woodsley or what? Bonsley? I want to say Woodsley. Bonsley, it could be Sutto Widow. It could be any. Trevenant of the tree again. Bonds. Trevenant again. Trevenant as the final boss. That would be hilarious. <laughs> it's Trevenant again. <laughs> they escaped from the forest. It could also just be like an electro because it turns into a sphere. <laughs> And just Mew again. Oh god. Just bring back the OGs. Yeah. But yeah, um, once we once we see this initial cutscene, make note of how long it is and such, and then we'll uh, I can go over exactly what's gonna happen and how it was discovered. <laughs> yeah. Let's get yeah, this is probably I mean for me the most exciting part of the run, because it's you know you're saving time. You're skipping a yeah. cutscene. Yeah. Um, and what is generally a straightforward run? Um, we we just do what uh, we have in front of us. Um, having a cutscene skip was surprising, and yeah, uh, it was. I find it enjoyable every yeah, time that we game, do it. This was not a game that we ever expected there to be any sort of sequence breaking, glitching, anything. It's not even too much of a glitch. It's just a weird way with how the game reads photos and reads story triggers, essentially. Hey, we were being uh, attacked by the five orbs and we didn't have the shield up. Very, very foolish of us. It's a tree! Ooh, it's a giant tropius. Let's go. <laughs> oh yeah, that's a good one. It's... <laughs> executor! A low one executor? No, that looks like a... <laughs> it's, it's another Sawsbrook. Clearly it's a ditto, because first it looked like a Sudowoodo, and then it looked like a Xerneas, and then it's going to look like an Electrode. So clearly it's just actually a ditto. It's just changing in between Pokemon. See, now it's just a sphere. Yeah, this, this makes sense. Um, but anyways. I didn't mention it previously. Uh, all the cute Pokemon are spheres, by the way. Every like <laughs> time that you, uh, you get a new Pokemon, and everybody's going to love it, uh, there's the new... Uh, the Chonk. Yeah, there we go. The chunk. And uh, I know it's going to be evolving to Homongus, and I'm going to love it. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so, so essentially, the gimmick with this level is you've got this Xerneas that has turned into a sphere for reasons. And uh, what you need to do is you need to hit the sphere with an orb. You're orbing the orb, <laughs> and then Xerneas will pop up. And then you need to hit Xerneas again with this orb, usually, to get it to do the thing. The normal spot, the intended spot, right is there. right in the water right there. You can hit it, it'll pop up on the right behind that column, take a picture, the end. But I was bad at the game one time, and I just completely messed it up during an all Pokemon run, and I completely missed it, and I was just panicking, like, like oh man, did I just throw the run? And instead of resetting it immediately... Three is, like, if you don't know what you're doing, is really hard and confusing. Yeah. I didn't know, I just was trying to come up with a backup, and my backup was this room. So I'm gonna let you just focus on this, make sure you don't do it too early. Where's the other, where's the fourth hole? Come here. To your right. <laughs> yeah, Please? Go. Okay. Did I not do it? Oh no. It was slightly I've not too gotten, late. I've not gotten fourth hole. Yeah. Um, I'm just definitely like right not. Here, probably. Yeah, so this is the exact text code that we're gonna get from uh from Professor. Yeah.
Actually, you know what? Let's not do this. Let's, let's go save five seconds. You guys can see what I've been playing recently. Some Pie Cross and some Mario <laughs> Strikers. Yeah, it's a bit it's a bit tight at the end there. Didn't get it first I try, unfortunately. I have not missed that in a while. Uh, yeah. But I did not expect it to be fourth hole. Yeah, so it's RNG. Um, it used to not be RNG, but now it is, I'm pretty sure. Which one yeah. of those uh, four holes that the Xerneas Sphere goes in. But for very weird reasons, taking the picture there will actually just save us a minute for no good reason. So we'll get to go through this again, see that cutscene yeah. again. We're essentially skipping a cutscene that's of exactly the same length as this first cutscene. So we've got this cutscene, it's a whole minute, whatever, right? I've been told and... not to do this. You're not meant to restart when you miss it. Because you have Are to you do not? this cutscene over again. Yeah. Oh, right. I've, I've just not missed it before. <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so the biggest reason that people don't get this is they start too early. Um, because our understanding, at least generally, is the reason that this skip works is because the exit is already spawned and we're getting a picture that happens to be considered illuminated despite the fact that we don't throw a second orb. Um, I've generally just been good about that. Um, that being said, there are four holes and it's so consistently been the first three and this marathon, it's a marathon run. I'm not, I'm not worried about it, I'm just expecting that marathon yeah. shenanigans will happen and as always so we uh we get more time to uh to close out this run but i really want to thank i really want to thank ib for joining me yeah. uh here on commentary this has been as pleasant as it could have possibly been and especially with the uh, Illumina pokemon and these long things i definitely need somebody to talk to because i would have lost my voice talking about nothing <laughs> yeah um with the run um, I mean, I'm not holding splits, but I'm not going to be particularly excited about the time, but I think we might be still sneaking under underestimate just barely, potentially. It should be pretty good. Um, this should be easily underestimated, so that's 10 minutes. Oh, is, did I, what did I give them? 245. I I oh, 245. Okay. Yeah, this will probably ten, be 10 minutes is weird. Uh, it should be uh, It should be 240, if anything. I. Yeah, um, but it's fine. I'm getting time save on things. I... My uh, my routing has previously been pretty conservative, and this was quite aggressive at times, for uh, for better or worse, because I wanted to show off some cool stuff. Let's actually do this. So I'm again gonna um, shut up for a moment. The visual cue that I use, by the way, Ip, is the right side of my screen passing the pillar. Uh, about Can you know your phone now. now. Please go in the hole. Thank you. Are we doing it again? Hit it. Now it goes up. And this is what we want to see. Now, essentially, the theory is that there's some mismatch with the story triggers where partially the game thinks that that exit shows up. And if you could read Japanese, you would know that this text is essentially a mirror saying, next time, try and get an illuminated photo of Xerneas. So that I can, you, you got know, it next time, champ. Well, like, no. But also, so that trigger shows up, which means the game thinks you haven't successfully taken a photo. So it doesn't show you the minute-long cutscene of Xerneas turning back into a tree. But then we go into the photo register screen, and what do you know? We actually took one picture of Xerneas, and it lets us select it. And so yeah. there's some sort of mismatch there where the game recognizes that we got a photo that's worth points, but the game also doesn't recognize that we've got a photo that's just, that fits so it does not show us the cutscene, but it still lets us finish the game, and it just saves a minute for pretty much no good reason. And yeah, that's that's the run, pretty much. Just yep. a bit more, uh, we one more cutscene. Do have, we do have one more cutscene. It's a very important cutscene. We need to learn about why <laughs> all of this is possible. Uh, but time is coming up for anybody who is in charge of that sort of thing. After I'm ready, just let me know. Cool, yeah. perfect. It'll be on the last text box that has to be mashed through, and then it'll transition into a true cutscene. Yeah, it's like three text boxes of ellipses in a row. Because <laughs> Professor is just completely bamboozled, which is very on theme for this whole thing. And...
Okay, so uh, this cutscene is very important. I know that uh, we have things we could be talking about, like what's coming up next and those sort of things, but we need to really understand that speedrunning is about friendship. And the power of friendship is why the Pokemon love us. Except for, you know, like the first time I tried Xerneas, that the Xerneas didn't uh, love yeah. us much, but the second Xerneas definitely did. Um, for anybody who's watching this because they like Pokemon and uh, hasn't really considered getting to speedrunning, I suggest it. Even just trying to beat a game quickly without necessarily like, having the whole stigma of speedrunning is, is fun, and I definitely suggest it. Especially if one of these is your favorite game. For people who are into speedrunning, uh, but haven't really tried Pokemon Snap, feel free to. It's uh, it's worth your money, um, no matter how much time you put into it. The uh, game's lovely. I really love this game, both just speedrunning it, but also just how beautiful it is, and, and it's fun to play casually. And I'm really happy that even just like this week, I think we found like two or three different things. Um, there isn't that much. Like, we're not going to be getting more sequence breaks, uh, at least expectedly, but... There definitely is more to uh, this game to explore. If anybody can get away from that crate dilly, I'd love it. But <laughs> anything else you want to add here Ed, before uh, we close out? Not really. So, GG's to you. Good run. I guess if anybody is interested in running this game, feel free to join uh, what the, was the, final uh, time? the Discord. Uh, two, two hours, 38 minutes. Yep, 2.38.03. Uh, yeah, okay. This routing is quicker. Um, I lost like three three or four minutes from my regular route but with the amount of time that i lost there uh this is going to be something i can work on in the future i'm, I'm happy with that sure. um that all said guys i believe uh we have more pokemon and more new like to pokemon speed running um games coming up here so i'm excited i'll see you guys in chat got tpat running bdsp i believe brilliant diamond yes it's gonna be a great run it's gonna be a great run and yeah he's He's actually the world record holder in, B in Brilliant Diamond, and he's going to be running that game. So stay tuned for that. And also both of you, Ivy and Pwned Noob, thank you so much for coming on. And we're really appreciative of it. And I actually really liked this game. I really liked this um, this run. So I might actually look into this myself. <laughs> glad to help. All of us are glad exactly. to help. All of us are um, glad to help. If you join the Discord, yeah. we're... It's uh, unsurprisingly a, uh, I mean, it's a speedrunning community. We're all, all speedrunners are generally trying to uh, go faster and the quickest way to go faster is the power of friendship and um, having, I mean, we've got now years of uh, experience. It's not like Pokemon Red where we've been 20 years of breaking down the game, but exactly. uh, I think that, I think that's yeah. better to be honest. There's actually things to discover. Uh, it's a pretty, pretty easy run to get into as well. As long yeah. as you're not going for the best time. It's exactly. very easy to get a like very respectable time on the leaderboard. All right. Uh, well, yeah. Again, thank you guys. Uh, we'll go ahead and go into our intermission, and then we'll, like we said, we'll have T-Pat and his BDSP run. So, all right, guys. Thank you. Thank you.